All right, here's a crazy fact. Every single person over the age of 50 has a risk of osteopenia. It's true. The average person, once they turn 50, starts to lose bone mass faster than they can build it. You know what this leads to? About a quarter, a quarter of all men and women over the age of 65 have osteopenia, okay? That's bone weakening. Weak bones leads to osteoporosis. This is a risk factor for mortality. Weak bones means weak body. And oftentimes when you get older and you break a bone, you die of pneumonia. Okay, so what do we do about this? How do we make our bones strong? Well, there's one big weapon against this. In fact, it's the most effective way to strengthen your bones, strengthen your muscles. Nothing has been shown to strengthen bone as effectively as simply strengthening your muscles. No form of exercise, no supplement, no drug comes close. So if you want to be invincible as you get older, if you want bones that are strong, that don't break, lift weights, keep lifting weights, mm. don't stop. Oh man, I was going to say drink milk. But, uh, <laughs> no. That's much better. Yeah. You know what? Yes. Uh, nutrient deficiencies can cause bone bone mass loss. Well, is it? Okay. So that I was going to go that direction too. So I'm glad you said that because I, I, I can't stand when we always, we, we tie these studies to age when it's really not age. It has more to do with years and years and years of being, of being deficient Com or not doing doing anything that would cause the body to adapt and strengthen the it's, bones. It's, it's you, not like, oh, 50, when you're 50, all of a sudden it's, you're, yes. this is going to happen like, to you. Poof, or, all of a sudden I'm brutal. It's that for 40 years you didn't do shit about you know preventing that. Yeah, no, it's compiled <coughs> years of inactivity. Compiled years of no weight-bearing activity. And so the body slowly adapts and weakens. Bones, just like muscles, are only as strong as they need to be. And muscles anchor in bones. Yeah. And look, you look at the data, it's very clear on this. If you want your bones to get stronger, you lift weights. Yeah. It's so funny to me. It's like, it would be like people saying, I need to get stronger muscles, so I'm just going to take supplements. Nothing's going to happen unless you don't send the signal yeah. for your muscles to get stronger. So what we heard a lot of when we were kids was, oh, you need stronger bones, take a bunch of calcium. Mm-hmm or vitamin D. Now this will help if you're in a deficiency, it'll help reduce the, the bone weakening that the deficiency causes, but it's minor in comparison to the signal that Plus strength if you training. overtake it, it's going to create a toxic environment. Oh, supplementing with too much calcium. It, it, it's not good for you. It goes in your arteries and increases uh, things like heart disease. In fact, in the eighties and early nineties, everybody was told to take a lot of calcium yeah. because they identified this. And then they went back and said, Oh no, 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 no. Don't do that. It's like build a plaque. Is that what it is? It, you get calcium deposits yeah. in your arteries and cause, uh, well, you know, lots of problems. So to what you're saying, I mean, isn't the most extreme example, like if we just look at astronauts in space and they stay in the space station and then come back down, what they have to account for in terms of like muscle and bone being affected and, and, um, and they exercise every day, they exercise every day. They need that gravitational, force to be able to maintain any kind of density. You know, when you look at uh, other forms of exercise, by the way, if you look at running, running's impact, right? So you would think, oh, it's going to really strengthen the bones. You have a slight increase in bone strength or bone mass in the lower body, nothing in the upper body. In fact, often you see bone loss in the upper body. No form of exercise directly strengthens bone like strength training because <laughs> strength training directly strengthens muscle. When they do analysis of weightlifters who are in old age, they have the bone mass of people in their 20s. I had a client. I was just going to ask yeah. you that. If, yeah. we, if we have any research yes. around, like, so imagine like uh, we've all got 20 years now under our belt of lifting or more, right? So, and of pretty consistent, heavy loaded squatting, deadlift movements like that. What if we shut it down completely from here on out, right? And yeah. Would we still, in say in our 50s and 60s, would, would we we'd still measure significantly higher? With our, our bone density. In comparison to someone who never yeah. lifted? Yeah, right. probably. Yeah. yeah, I think so. We have more to lose. Yeah. You know, so, but we would definitely go backwards. <clears throat> oh, but, yeah. You atrophy. Yeah. Well, we would build definitely a foundation. Have. Yeah. But because we've, I mean, I, you would think that you, because you've already put that much work in of prolonging that and, and because you get like the, I saw, um, uh, Aaron, was it Aaron, right? Our buddy over at Squat University did a really cool like visual video of what's happening like with these like micro fractures in, in, yeah, the your bone. bone literally builds a callus. <clears throat> right. And it yeah. becomes like strong. You know, I, I don't know if I've ever shared this with you guys, but when I was growing marijuana, one of the things that you would do 
to produce a higher yield oh, on let me the guess. plant. You would strain the 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 the, the stem or the that's right it's called it's called low level stress training yeah. on the on the on the plant and you actually i remember it was like a really it scary you break it a little bit it was a really scary technique that i would do when i, when I was first learning it. and i was always because okay these things are you got weeks and weeks invested in it there's only so many you can put in an area to grow they're worth a lot of money and then here i'm reading about like intentionally kind of breaking it. And I'm like, oh my God, if I kill this thing. You I'm, go too hard, you'll, it'll. Yeah. yeah. And and what you would do is you would, you would just counter like uh, each way, uh, a slight twist until you hear this. And you hear, and basically you're getting, you're not snapping it in half. You're just enough to where you hear it kind of pop inside and that cause, and then it would get this elbow and then it would grow thicker and stronger. Yeah. And then it would yield Huh. Because it's got a stronger base and root, and then it would yield and produce in extreme more. in extreme cases. They've done analysis on uh, Muay Thai fighters, uh, like forearms and shins, shins yeah. or old school Japanese karate um, practitioners' knuckles. Uh -huh. And if you look at the if you look at a bone <coughs> inside a bone, there's like this hexagonal kind of uh, pattern, okay, uh -huh. with air space in between. But it's then like there's meshing, bone. yeah, it looks like meshing. And what happens is the micro fractures over time fill in those spaces. Mm. So you actually get these thicker, heavier, denser bones uh -huh. um, from that impact of fighting. Now that's a very extreme, I mean, I don't think you should do that, but strength training, built, look, I had a client- I always uh, wondered about that because like, I mean, that was a big thing was the conditioning yes. of the bone. And like, so we'd have to do uh, jump rope and stuff on asphalt and like yeah. barefoot and then kick. They would kick bamboo trees and stuff to condition their shins. Banana, I think banana tree. I'm like, yeah. is this really doing You ever watch a video of that, by the way? Causing mm -hmm. pain. You ever seen a banana tree get kicked by, yeah. by a Muay Thai guy? Oh, like yeah, 140 bro. pound I was, dude. I, I went down that rabbit hole when I was training oh. for that. Was so I had a client, crazy. Doug knows him, Jim. He was in his late 60s. and the swimmer guy? Yeah, and he lifted for years. And he's not like, he wasn't a big dude. He's a natural ectomorph, right? But he'd been training for years. Very fit guy, very dedicated to exercise and diet. And he went, he would get bone mass, uh, you know, hormone tests and bone mass. And the bone mass reading would come back and the doctors were like, you have the bone density of like a 20 something year old fan. Awesome. Like we don't see this Sick. on anybody. And it's because he lifted for years and years. And now he's not a jack dude. If you saw him, he looked like a fit, healthy, older guy. Okay. He wasn't huge, but the repeated stress of the strength training had made his bones so strong. People don't realize this, okay? One of the most common causes of mortality among the elderly or it's people- Falling down and breaking yeah. a bone. It's like, it's, like, it's like heart disease, cancer, and then mobility issues, uh -huh. falling down. It's like, it's one of the top five or 10 for sure. Yeah. And I know, I don't know about you guys, but I know people. Well, and by the way, to, by the yeah. way, exercise and training, right. Is helps all three of those. All of them. All of them. That's, I mean, the, that's, what's crazy about that. Like, yeah. Like you, you could do one thing that helps this one thing that helps right, that. Right. But that helps all three of those all, significantly, too. significantly yeah. strength training by itself, by itself, independent of other factors will reduce your cancer risk across the board by 25%. Mm -hmm. Nothing does that except quitting smoking, but that's different because that means you've already introduced the cancer risk and now you're taking it out. Yeah. Strength training is uh, insane with its protective benefits, but with the, and by the way, balance is a big one too. People, you know, I know balance has to do with the inner ear and the brain and the central nervous system, but a significant percentage of balance loss literally is weakness. Yeah. It's weakness and lock, uh, loss of proprioceptive ability because you don't test and strengthen your body. So as you get weaker, you lose balance. So now when you're older and you take a misstep, mm -hmm. oh, you don't have the strength to catch yourself um, and you fall over. And it's uh, it's 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 pretty scary. And I know people, by the way, I've, I've known people this has happened to where, you know, they I had a lot, I, I've told you guys this, this story before. It was one of the most heartbreaking thing I've ever seen in my life. I trained this woman for a while. She was uh, late 70s. Her daughter hired me to train her. And um, she already had signs of dementia, but it was super mild. It was like, you know, she would kind of tell the same story over and over, kind of like what dads do, you know, but usually women don't do that. So you could tell there was a little bit of something going on, but it wasn't anything crazy. And I trained her for a long time and slowly over the, you know, over the months and years, I trained her for maybe, I think two or three years, we'd see her get stronger and everybody was, you know, her family would comment on just how amazing it was and she's walking better, this and that. Well, anyway, she was at home. And she slipped in the bathtub, fell, okay, broke her femur. That's a big bone of the upper leg. Yeah. And her daughter's like, we can't, you know, she's got to do, re you know, go to the doctor. We have her in bed rest. We can't afford to hire you anymore because we have to hire full-time care because I can't be with her. 
So I saw her, I don't know, it was like seven or eight months later at the grocery store. I ran into her. First off, her posture, which already we had been working on. So she already had a bit of a hunched, because I got her, like I said, in her, mid, in her late 70s. So she, she walked upright, but you, she had posture issues. When I saw her, she was with her daughter on a walker, completely hunched over. And I saw her daughter recognize her. Hey, and I saw, you know, my old client. Hey, you know, how you doing? She looked at, at me, didn't recognize me. Remember, I trained her twice a week yeah. for years. Mm -hmm. And she looked at me, she goes, who are you? And her daughter said, oh, you know, this is, mom, this is Sal. He used to train you. Oh, okay. And yeah. I'm literally, I'm like, oh, I wanted to cry. Oh, I'm like, oh my brutal. God. Yeah. Because she was bedridden, couldn't do anything. And over that seven month or whatever period of time, her health declined so quickly. Yeah. And then she she passed away, you know, shortly yeah. after. Yeah. Sad. But yeah, you, you, you know, um, bone weakening, we don't talk about. But if when we look at the stats on muscle strength declining, like I've, you know, how many times have I brought this up, right? That a college aged male today has the grip strength of a 65 year old in like 1984. What goes along with that hand in hand is bone mass. Mm -hmm. So if people are getting weaker, for sure bones are getting weaker. Right. They're directly connected. Right. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, this is a a, a massive yeah. issue that we're not necessarily it's a issue that we're not addressing. It's not a big mainstream talking point yet, yeah. but it will be. Yeah. It will be for sure because yeah. it, they go hand in hand. Well, especially since a lot of the innovation and technology that we have is is not helping that. Yeah. Right. Like everything that like how, I mean, it's so convenient that we can order food it, it being brought to our house. And we have these electric scooters now that get us around downtown areas. And, you know, we can have an Uber come pick us up anywhere at any time. It's like, but boy, all that stuff is not helping that. And then you add in the fact that people aren't strength training that. So it's going to be interesting. Do you predict that Sal? And like, 10, 15 years will like, this will become like a, like a normal news conversation because it's becoming so alarming. On It's a crisis that's already here and it's looming. And yes, I think, you know what I think will make it explode will be a pharmaceutical drug that'll come out that somehow does some help. And then they'll, then they'll start talking about it and selling it. But it's, it's a, it's a big problem. It's a mm. huge looming growing problem. Men, you guys know this, that men used to almost never suffer from osteopenia and osteoporosis. This is a woman's, it was, they, they it used to be labeled a woman's disease. Or oh, well, I imagine because of traditional ways in the past where Correct. men did all this labor. Mass, right? yeah. And hormones play a role, right? Yeah, Testosterone of course that helps. But I mean, a real, the main thing was that we had yeah. most jobs over a hundred years ago were all like hands-on labor jobs. Yes, you know what I'm saying? You're yes. doing, and even if you didn't do that for a living, right? Let's say you were you know, a lawyer or a doctor, someone that you had to do physical stuff back at home, right? You, everybody yeah. had like some sort of a farm or you had to go you do something physical to produce stuff at your house. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. There was a drug. I'm looking it up right now because, uh, I wanted to soft handed dudes be, <laughs> be, I want to be accurate with this, but like one of the more popular medicines for bone loss is Fosamax, which Oh, I've heard of that. It's yeah. got some terrible, uh, side effects, really bad side effects. People feel like shit after they take it. And its effects are like minor in comparison to strength training. I don't know why they don't just. And by the way, you take someone with osteopenia, just have them do strength training thirty minutes once a week. Yeah, that's it. Make thirty a minutes difference. Thirty minutes once a week, and you'll see better results than you will with uh, any of these medications that are on the market. Today's YouTube giveaway is Maps Performance. If you want to win that program, here's what you got to do: leave a comment under this video in the first twenty four hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We also have a sale going on this month. Our beginner strength training program, MAPS Resistance is half off. And then our correctional exercise program, MAPS Prime Pro is also 50% off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. So speaking of taking something and feeling like crap or whatever, uh, so why is it the, the my Sudafed <laughs> sucks and I keep getting the wrong one? That so I'm like I'm battling yeah. a cold if you haven't figured it out yeah. yet. Uh, and you, Sal feeds me his Sudafed and keeps telling me that I'm you didn't buying get the locked up version. I'm buying the wrong one, and I'm like I don't understand. If they're all Sudafed or an off brand no, version dude. of it. So so legit <laughs> original Sudafed is pseudoephedrine. By the way, Doug, pseudoephedrine is because it's synthetic ephedrine. You used to get ephedrine from herbal sources. So pseudoephedrine is a decongestant. It will definitely, like if you're congested, it'll dry things out, open things up. 
The problem is people were taking that and, and turning it into meth. Yeah. <laughs> and so yep. there were lots of laws making it, like when you go buy the real Sudafed, mm -hmm. they ask for your driver's license. You can only buy so many boxes. They'll track you. So no, okay. They still do that with the, the, the shitty stuff. I had to give my license when I bought that the, the Sudafed yesterday. The phenylephrine one? Yes. Really? Yes. Maybe there's a way to turn that into, I don't know. But I know that that <laughs> one, which is over the counter. Gasoline. Yeah. yeah. So phenylephrine, the, the, you could buy that um, just like in the aisle at the, at the, right. at the pharmacy. The, uh, the real deal Sudafed, you got to go, go behind the counter and ask the guy or whatever the girl working there. To bring it out. I wonder but how- the phenylephrine one's way, like, what a- it doesn't Well, do so shit. I took it this morning at like six or seven yeah, in the morning. There's nothing. And it's going at a four-hour half-life or whatever, and I didn't feel like it really helped me at no. all. So I then asked- I give you the, what, the- Yeah, and it's not even been an hour yet, and I already feel a difference from that. Oh, yeah. It's like night and day difference. Oh, yeah. I had, this whole time, I've never known that. Because the phenylephrine one- uh, Was that- How long has that been going on? It's been around for a long time. No, but I mean that they moved it to where you can't oh, even get God. it unless you go ask. It's got to be at least 10 years. Really? I, I think so. so this whole time I've been bad. taking <laughs> shitty ass suit. Yeah, it doesn't dude. really work. Breaking bad. Yeah, kind of bro. All that it's up. crap. Yeah. That phenylephrine one does nothing. Pseudoephedrine will work for sure. You feel that? Oh, I feel it. I feel yeah. it's not even been an hour. I already feel a, di a dramatic difference yeah. from the the other one that I took this morning that uh -huh. was only supposed to terrible, dude. Yeah, so I have a theory with that, right? So, And I'm going to piss off every doctor listening, but... <laughs> Um, I think I have a theory that cause you know, you get a cold a viral infection, you get a bunch of congestion in your sinuses and in your lungs. And then that can often turn into a bacterial infection, a sinus infection or a lung infection. My theory is taking those pharmaceuticals. It doesn't do anything to get your body rid of the virus. It just reduces symptoms, but because it reduces the blockage, it reduces the risk. This is my theory, everybody. It reduces the risk of the buildup of mucus and bacteria that potentially could lead to bacterial infection. So I feel like it's a good preventative for potential infections later on. So that plus um, guaifenesin, mucinex. Oh yeah, yeah, and that 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 in my opinion is uh, well, how I think so. I don't know if there's any. I mean, mucinex, Sudafed, and zinc and elderberry used to be like is oh, like yeah. the combo. I feel yeah, like yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, those are the things that I always try and stock. By up. the way, pseudoephedrine is ephedrine. So like people who <laughs> used to take ephedrine back in the day, I think yeah. it's like the same thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what I like about it is I feel like I mean, especially when I got to work, right? So I feel it gives me energy on top of dry yeah. dry me all up. And then what is it that's a Nyquil that we love so much? Oh, uh, the antihistamine that makes you fall asleep. I love it's, that stuff. Yeah, it makes you, and, it, and it's got a cenobenefin. Yeah. It's got, uh, I can't remember the name of the- Has uh, it got a type of codeine that's a in really it? That's really funny one, no. yeah, because it used to have codeine in it. And my, they took all the good stuff away. Yeah, my brother, so <laughs> my brother's never, like, he didn't drink, like, very straight-laced, like, uh, and he was in college, and he w felt like a cold, and so he decided to drink some NyQuil. He drank, like, a lot of NyQuil. It was, like, more than you're supposed to take, and he was, like, it was funny talking to his roommates and everything because he was, like, super drunk and, like, yeah. it was, like, you know, acting uh, all crazy, but uh, he's like, oh, I loved it. And I'm like, yeah, dude, that, those are, that's legit drugs. Bro, dude, isn't that's, it, like, coding in there, Don't dude. people, didn't they, like, people Scissor. turn that into what? Scissor. Yeah, that's a How do you make that? What drink. is that? It's it's literally it's just the it's uh It's like over ice. No, it's with, a, it's the forget it's the, the yeah, it's a type of codeine. I, uh -huh. I'm missing the full medical name. It comes in the the brown bottle with that and it's purple scissor. That's what you saw like all the rap that that move where everybody was walking around with the red cups at the at the Grammys and things like that. It's like that was what's in there. And all you do is you mix 7 up a Jolly Rancher and that together. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that, kids. Don't do that, kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love you, dude. <laughs> you did. Anyway, back in the day, back in the day. Yeah, hey, no, hey. Allegedly be, was, yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Hey, a friend of mine yeah. used hey, to do that. Medicines, so. like, and we think that, oh, like pseudoephedrine and codeine, oh, that's the real deal. Bro, go back far enough. Yeah. They had toothache drops for kids with, with heroin. And, uh, oh, my God. Well, that, remember, you know? uh, what was know, it? Yeah. What was the opiate that was big time back then? It was, um, it was just la laudium. Laudium? 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 Mm -hmm. I don't know. Sorry. Like, what? Well, this is Doug like, has no idea. No idea. It started with this marijuana plant talk. I know what you're talking back about. They, they, um, that was in Tombstone. His you know, I always, like, so I, I was around that stuff, right? Obviously. Um, and I, it, it's, it was a really expensive way to, to do that stuff. Like mm. it, I, I always thought, which is why it made sense. Why it was like big in like the hip hop rap oh, culture. Cause they, they got, they, money, so they got like fucking money. Flex. Like it was, yeah. yeah, it was like a really, like I, rem I remember like seeing like how much a bottle would go for, especially on the black market. And then how much you had to mix to feel that. And I was just like, this is crazy.
Yeah. Like that's way too, way too much money to do that. You yeah. Know you saying? ever look at old uh, medicine ads for like. Uh, it was laudanum, right, Doug? Yeah. Laudanum. La- okay. Laudanum. Laudanum. So that's yeah. a. So this is like. This, opium, so back yeah. in the days, Opiate. like this is what, what everybody was hooked on. It was on. used for preparing patients for surgery. <clears throat> Yeah. Oh, hey, chill out. Real don't quick. you remember the scene? Don't, don't you remember the scene in Tombstone? I never watched that movie. What? No. You've never watched What's Tombstone? That? No. You're crazy. That's bro. like an all time yeah. favorite of mine. Is it? I haven't seen it I either. Just, what? Whoa. Yeah. No, I haven't. Yeah. Whoa. I can't believe we haven't talked about this. I showed this. it to my kids. Like, bro, a Tombstone weeks is ago. like, that is a favorite movie of mine. Oh, it's oh, the check best. It out. Yeah. You have to watch that, Doug. Yeah. Oh, that's the that's the best Val Kilmer performance you ever seen. Yeah, One exactly. of the best Kurt Russell. Better, oh. better than what he did in uh, in uh, Batman, bro. <laughs> bro, Val yeah. Val Kilmer <laughs> in that. It, <laughs> it's not hard to talk. Play, yeah, no. It's so good. I can't believe you guys haven't seen that movie. It's uh-uh. a great no. movie. It's a classic. Dude. What's that? It's a is that a western? Western. Yes. What's the okay, one? Corral. I've seen that one western. And it's based on a lot of true events. Right? My yes. favorite western based movie was the one with Emilio Estevez and uh, God, come oh, on, oh, Young, Young Guns. 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 That was yeah. awesome. That's a good one too. That was. A great that movie. It's equal, or, or I think Tombstone's hey, better. Dog. Hey dog, really? You see the size yes. of that chicken? Yeah, remember that scene where oh, he's yeah. with it? They're all they're all hopped up on the peyote, and he's and he leans over in the horse, oh, yeah. and he's talking yeah. to the I horse. Oh, the what dog. a great movie, dude! I, I mean, you have to watch Tombstone's Tombstone, even dude. better. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Is, yeah, it, I love now, it. is it about those outlaws and stuff? Yes, it's day? all based on like real, like the cow. What they called the outlaws were called cowboys back then. Yeah. And that's like the origin of all that. It has like seen the the fight at OK Corral and like. So obviously it's a fictional movie, but they yeah. take a lot of real like what char- really happened. Really happened, real characters, and then create a storyline. It's it's a longer movie. It's like almost four hours. You guys ever it's read so about good. you guys ever read about those outlaws and the shit that they did mm-hmm. in those days? Crazy. Yeah. yeah, because like I'm kind of related to them, which is unfortunate. What, say what? Yeah, the Clanton gang. How do you what do you mean you're related? The ones that were at the OK Corral. Like there's like descendants of our in our family tree. Like Really? The, yeah, that were You related. do strike me as like a cowboy. <laughs> yeah. Outlaw. Yeah. No, it's like they were ranchers and uh, I forget where they were from. Look up the from Clinton in the game. South. I want to see their faces. Yeah. Do you like do, okay, do you believe this? Like when you have like like ties to that like that, that you're drawn to that, like a, there's a part of I think you. there's an identification thing that goes on because let's yeah. be honest. It's somewhere near like genetics. Like you have some kind Maybe, of. Maybe, cool... but look, here's what I look. You go back far enough, yeah. all of us have an outlaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All of us have a. Right. So, right. Some right. hero, everybody. yeah, heroic person. Yeah, dude, past everybody's like. got someone in there. That's that. Wow, it looks just like Justin. Does, look at that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Clanton. <laughs> Who, who is That's that? weird. They it, made him like super stupid in Tombstone, though. It was Did like they? annoying. Yeah. Oh, they, is he the like the kind of drunk, slobbery yeah, one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, Ike. Wow. Ike. Yeah. Yeah. Ike. That's yeah. Ike right here. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Now, what? So was, was Dude, your you great, great, it, great uncle or something? Uh, yeah. I don't know how many generations back, but yeah. It, what it did was they do? Related to like my grandpa, my mom's side. They were they were outlaws. Yeah, I know. But what was their thing? Some of them were bank robbers. Some of them. Yeah, they were ranchers. They were like the original gangs. Cattle rustlers. Cattle hustlers. They would go in and, and they would just take money. Steal from, your cattle. Ca- yeah, wow. casinos. And they mobster, would just take over towns. Mobster type shit, but in, ca- in, wow. in the old Western times. Wow. Yeah. Look yeah. at those pictures, dude. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. You, you know guys, what I'm, wa- you- I'm watching right now? It's like there's a really good uh, docu-series on uh, Netflix of John Gotti. I'm watching that right oh, now. Yeah. That's uh, I'm on the Did you guys ever watch too, the reality show with the, his wife and sons? Who? I didn't watch it. Who, who? I know what you're talking about. Okay, so you know, remember the Jersey Shore with the blowout, the hair blowout, the guidos? Yeah, something grown grown up gaudy or something like that. Yeah, they started that shit. So his sons and his his wife, there was a reality show about them. By the way, the the wife, like you could tell she was married to John Gotti. You wouldn't want to mess with her. She's a character. Yeah, but it was a great show. You never saw that? No. Oh, Doug, look it up. Look up Growing Up Gotti. Yeah. G-O-T-T-I. I did not know that. It was a great show from, oh, I want to say what, early I mean, that was our childhood uh-huh. when that was all going down. That was 85 to 90, right in that yeah. range when like he was getting. Yeah, look at look at these guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I've never seen uh, this before. Yeah. Oh, it was great, bro. It was a great show. Yeah. But that's like the whole like Guido blowout hair type of deal. Yeah. That's when it became kind of mainstream. Yeah. You know, the. the Jersey the, Shore kind of. Yeah, the tanning and there. all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's is he is he dead now? Who? I don't even John Gotti. I don't know. I think so. Or is, is he? Did he did he pass or is he in prison? I have no idea. I don't either. I'm not that far. I'm not far enough in the thing to know where, where he's. Do you do you have uh, do you know anybody like your ancestors, Adam? Or you're not sure what's uh, 
you know, I, I, the reason why I brought that up is I know my re, my biological father was really into like gangster, old school gangster oh, stuff. Yeah. In fact, all of our animals are were named after like Bonnie, Clyde, like oh, wow. Dutch. Like they were oh, all okay. named after old time gangsters as I was a kid. And I didn't know that as a, as a real young kid. I didn't know that until I got older. And I don't know. I've, I've, I'm drawn to that stuff. I like, I watch it. I like it. Obviously, there's a side of me that was, you know. It's oh, it's so interesting to me how, and media has done this, is uh, as they've glamorized the the gangster. Well, you know, where we think it's cool. He's a, he's a yeah. big reason for that. They, they get into that in the documentary. Like he was the he was the first kind of gangster that like. Would like openly like, media love being himself. the Godfather. Would dress up for the cameras yeah. and like, so they they talk about that that really got popularized in in the in the eighties because of John Gotti because he it used to be the mobsters wanted to be didn't want to be known undercover oh, yeah. like you know they oh, don't, the old school like mobsters and they, they lived up Sopranos, in the mountains right? and the hills yeah so they, they weren't, they weren't like, trying to they no. weren't trying to put the and then he is like was the new age it's, it's interesting to me how it gets uh, <laughs> because because obviously my family's from you know Sicily and mm -hmm. so I know yeah, stories I know real things that have happened. And there's nothing to glamorize. It's no. not. Oh, it's yeah. not cool. It's, 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 it's not great at all. It's yeah. not like they're cool and like they take care of people and they help you out. Type of no. It's no. not great at all, man. I got. I have a family member try to open a business. I'm not gonna say too much, but tried to open a business from so came here when they were younger. Went back to there. Tried to open a business. The business started doing too well. Yeah. Got visited. Yeah. And they said shake down. Shut this down yeah. because you're out competing our friends over here. They said, I don't follow these rules. Right. We're from America. And they set their fucking business on fire dude. and killed their dogs and everything. Oh, my God. I mean, yeah. it's, yeah, dude. I used to work with a guy that was, like, he was a bartender with me. But, like, I knew he had extracurricular uh, uh, things that he, like, he worked for these guys that were all part of, like, something. And he, he was kind of like the hitman. So he would go out and, and shake up and get money from people. And I'm like, dude, he was a boxer. And so I'd train with him sometimes. But I was mm -hmm. like, that was where I, I like, kept a nice line there. Like, yeah. I, I don't want to get too involved with whatever you're well, doing. Here's a cool conspiracy theory. But I think there's a lot of evidence of this, Justin, that the mafia helped America come through Sicily Mm. When uh, remember remember Mussolini was with Hitler and yeah. they switched sides or whatever. The mafia played a role in that because they went through yeah because they don't want because when when Mussolini took over he put the mafia out of business because he controlled uh, everything yeah they don't so like they that. were like come on in yep. yeah to the Americans that's huh. the theory conspiracy theory it's believable you want I mean, okay you want to see answers so there's a motive there Doug look this up look up uh, uh, Visconti royal family Milan this is my mom's side. Hmm. Yeah, you're Visconti. It, my mom's side is Visconti. And this, and we know this very clear. We have the ancestry. So it's not like we're guessing. Yeah. We're very clear that this is where my, my mom's side came from. So they all were like barons oh, wow. uh, up in northern. So there's a castle in Milan. You could find, huh. maybe, maybe, let's see if Doug finds a castle. I've been there before. That's the family crest. So go up. Yeah. The snake swallowing a baby. Don't know what the hell that means. Uh, <laughs> I did. I, at one point, I thought of getting a Can't tattoo be like good, that. Whatever like, it is, eh, means, I don't know if yeah. I want to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's uh, so. Doug, look up Visconti of Milan Castle, huh. and, um, and you know that would be a fun thing to do with you guys is for us to all make our own family crests and go do that right there. That was there. Yeah. So that belonged to my ancestors, and then yeah. they for some reason they left. I don't know if because they, they had to flee or what the deal was. I don't know what the history is. It is it still exist there? And is yeah. It, is, it, is it occupied or what do you know? No, no, no. It's historical. So it's a it's a place that people go to visit. So you can go there and and take it. I did. I did you know, take it. You know what's so fascinating to me about like old castles like this is many times, especially one of that that's that size, was built in the, the person who started it their lifetime and they didn't even get to live in it a lot of times because something of that magnitude back in those times took like a hundred years to build. Dude, how long did the Sistine Chapel take to build? I think that was like- The Louvre uh, is like over two centuries. Yeah. It took, like, so- So imagine family, you, ima I know, imagine starting a build and building something you'll never that you'll never get to see the end of it. No, not only that, That's but wild. you, uh, your son, your grandson, your great-grandson all work on it. Yeah. Uh, together to build this. So a crazy. Legacy, though. But yeah. if you look at, the, have you ever, so you visited some of these things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The detail- yeah, insane. Exactly. Oh my! That's what God. I love about Europe and like because it's just such old history. Yeah, and you could see all the art that uh, they took a lot of time to produce, and you would 
Nobody takes that kind of no. like extra time and craft to, to we ain't make got, things anymore. We ain't got to no time. <laughs> uh, I'll say this was eliminated built, it. This, took, at, this look, built pretty fast. Yeah, so. look at the Louvre. The Louvre is over a hundred years. Yeah, that yeah. One took I a think while. I want to say it was like one fifty, if I remember. Yeah. Oh, Maybe even longer. Speaking of popes, Justin, you you had some 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 facts on popes. Uh, well. No, I just know that. The, okay, so if you're referring to like the conspiracy of like uh, gray and white, two and centuries on huh, black it? popes, yeah, yeah, it was a palace for two centuries. Oh, okay, no, no, no. it took. Um, over, how long did it take well, to yeah, build the construction? Though. What does it say there? I'm trying to find it. Uh, I know I've read that. That's my, by the way, that's my favorite place to visit in the world. Lou, uh huh. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, I, I spent two days going through that. It yeah, yeah it took two hundred years. 200 years. Oh, for bro. it to become a museum. So I don't know. No, I, I know I've read it. It took that long to build. It's took, it took a long time to build. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, All right. So popes, did you guys know there was an anti-pope? Yeah. What's an anti-pope? Like, like a fake? Look like up a the fake? anti- No. Like a- Apparently there was a disagreement over who they elected. So back then, mm. this is what I understand. Mm. Maybe I'm going to get mm. some things wrong here. But, yeah. but the, ca- always, the, the church, the stuff. church. Yeah, see? Anti-pope John. Uh, the, the church had their own army. They had tremendous amount of power in Europe that mm-hmm. rivaled Kings. Mm-hmm. And so it was like their own like organization with tons of power. And I guess they elected a Pope that other people disagreed with. So they elected another Pope that they called the, the anti-Pope that was referred to as the anti-Pope. Huh? Yeah. Sure. He was killed. Uh, I don't know. That's, no, uh, no, I don't know. Sure it turned into Illuminati or, you know, went yeah. that direction. There's a pirate Pope. <laughs> no, that's, yes. no, that's actually the anti pope. Oh, Doug, go to the Wikipedia. What, what does it say about him? It's scroll down. I saw something that that when you go down, there you go. What does that say? Anti Pope John the twenty third. Twenty, uh, yeah, twenty third was acknowledged as pope by France, England, Bohemia, Portugal, and parts of the Holy Roman Empire. Yeah, see parts. So it's like you had two popes at the same time. Interesting. I know. It was it like rivalries? Yeah, think? yeah, dude. Wow. They had an army. They were, I didn't they know was, you could do that. Yeah. Isn't that is it true that the Catholic Church is one of the largest land lo- landowners Yo, in the world? Well, they're uh-huh. one of the wealthiest organizations in the world. Well, and, that's I, and most yeah, powerful. They think the Roman Empire never really uh, you know died off. It just all kind of congregated into Do, the Vatican. Now you don't they have like a historical library? God, I wish we had um, Bishop Barron on to ask. Yeah, don't they have a historic a, a historical library or something uh-huh. where nobody's allowed in there? Yeah, but the highest order of they have no. all kinds of artifacts and things you like the public can't have access to. Oh. And is nowhere near the, the yeah. church is bought yeah, up so a lot of it's a myth. Contrary well, yeah, look looks at, out uh, there too. wealthy. Look at wealth though. Yeah. There's far more McDonald's. McDonald's is one of the most powerful now. Yes. Yeah. How funny is that? McDonald's crushed. I've always found that I think that's so interesting and fascinating that that's what like McDonald's is not really a, a hamburger place. It's really a, a bit real estate, real estate yeah, business. Yeah, I know. They're it, one of the few that do that really that actually smart. own the property. The very few places, restaurants, businesses do that. You lease typically the, such the smart business. Oh, brilliant. speaking of smart business, the thing you sent me today on Elon Musk. Oh, I brilliant! Yeah. Did you know? You know, I thought so many people. Are, well, you're going to say this, and so many people are gonna, that hate him already are going to hate him for that. But I think it's a brilliant move. Oh wow, the Catholic Church is worth thirty billion dollars. Yeah, that's a lot. Right there, about thirty billion. That is a lot, isn't I, it? I would imagine there's more than that. Yeah, and that's above ground. I, I right? bet you that's just what they're reporting. Yeah, yeah. they have a time machine. They have a, isn't there a conspiracy theory that they have a time machine? There is. There's this weird one. <laughs> what? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh I'm, I'm not even joking. It's like a, um, it's some. It, I forget exactly how the contraption works, but it's apparently it's like some kind of Stargate or something. You just like it. it I don't know. I, I can't even describe it, dude. I'll sound like an idiot. Like, just to, <laughs> like there's no, it, there's somewhere you can, you can look it up. And I, I remember bringing it up as a note and I was like, I want to talk about this, but it's like, I, then you have to like describe all the inner workings of it and like how it works. I have no idea, but it's like, apparently they can, it's some, some kind of like visual where you can see into the past somehow. Oh. Like, so it's, I don't know if it's, you know what they're using well, they to have, produce it. They have uh, like vaults of historical information and stuff that nobody's allowed to go in. Nobody's allowed to touch except for like the highest order of you know people. Interesting. That are, yeah, and they don't know what's in there. Like, yeah. like is there what's the truth of you know Mary Magdalene or what's the truth of this history or did this actually happen? Yeah, and they keep that all sealed. Well, what is so? What's what's London going to be like? We're getting ready to fly to London. So what's that going to be like as far as like uh, historical stuff and like like they because they have they have more history than we have here. Yeah. So oh, yeah. 
I would assume it's a modern city too, though. Um, so it's not like you know. I, I don't know. Lots of museums and things. Yeah. And Has anyone been? Doug, you've been there, no? I've been there. I didn't do a lot of, you know, tour stuff. Tour stuff, yeah. Um, My in-laws keep telling me to go to Harrods. I don't know what, what was that. It's like a big a shopping store? area. Yeah, like, yeah. I, remember, I sent you guys a list of things what to do. My okay. client told me to go to, and that was one yeah. of them. So Honestly, I don't know a lot. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you have like the obviously you got the Buckingham uh, Palace, Tower of London. Yeah, You've got Tower all the London. big Parliament So we got a, like a thirteen-hour flight, I think, something like that, like a thirteen-hour flight ahead of us. Is it thirteen? I don't think it's quite that much. I think it's nine. I know. I, well, I think it's ten or eleven. Oh, yeah. yeah, was, yeah so, and, and I think it's more coming back. Right? What's our protocol? What are we doing here? I know. I say how funny is this? So first of all, to tell the audience. Oh God! I sent a message. Of we were, we were we were already talking to Sal. Like, hey, you know, let's. Or the time change and like we're gonna have jet lag and let's tr let's actually let's get our it, bodies to adjust. As yeah, fast let's as make possible. an effort to try and like really get adjusted right away. And what are some of the things that we should do nutritionally, rest, and you know whatever all these things. Uh -huh. And I'm like, you know what? Let me let me message Ben. He travel. He goes all ben over. Ben Greenfield. The, ben Greenfield goes yeah, all biohacker over. Biohacker. Yeah, right. And <laughs> and Sal's like, oh god, I don't even want to see his list. It's gonna be ridiculous yeah. about that. And sure as shit, he sends me back. <laughs> This is long, long old thing. And the funny part about it is like, here was you know, you expect melatonin to be on there. Yeah, right. Data shows you take melatonin when you're supposed to go to sleep. It helps reset your circadian rhythm. I expect that. Yeah. But, and I should have expected this from Ben. His is uh, rectally. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Why, Naturally. Ben? Yeah. Why are you always trying to put things in your butt? Yeah. It like, works if you take it in your mouth, too. I was like, there, of course, there had to be something ridiculous like that. I mean, he sent the long old list to me, and then there was like- I a, think he just wants to be so different sometimes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, you take melatonin. Everybody oh, takes melatonin. Yeah. yeah, but do you do it like this? Well, I think that's just- the, I think that's the biohacking community, period, right? If you're into- If you're- If you are, you know- if that's your thing. They just always have to be weird. Yeah, different. you got to yeah. be like you're, yeah. you're you're trying every little edge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Versus like well, let's yeah. pick the two. I hang rocks. upside down and insert it rectally. <laughs> yeah. I mean, melatonin, uh, red light, and a sauna. I I've heard are like three fast. You got so what you want to do is you want to start to eat the, the yeah, what same are we doing? schedule. What are we doing? We're leaning on. I don't know. If we're I'm do not this. doing any rectal stuff from Ben, so yeah, I'm gonna yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna let you. <laughs> I'll also have you guys do it. <laughs> I'm like I'm no, no, I did this too, guys. Here, yeah. do this. What What done. are you having us do? So, like, no, no, like, so, like EMF covered like robes. No, and, you know, dude, it's like, gotta be the, realistic. Like, green laser eyes. So the, the the data shows uh, a couple things that work really well. Um, one is to eat uh the day before and day of, like as you're traveling, according to the schedule of the place you're gonna arrive, because your gut also yeah. has a circadian rhythm. Right. So what you don't want to do is eat when you're supposed to be sleeping in the place you're going to go to because you're just prolonging that. So su supposedly, not supposedly, it's what the studies show, you fast and then you eat when you're supposed to eat. So let's say you're on the plane yeah. and you know, you're know you tired and you're, yeah. you want to fall asleep, but you look at your you know, watch, London time, you're like, oh, this is 8 a.m. This is when I would eat breakfast. Yeah. Eat your food type of deal. And don't eat if it's like 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. Right, right. in their time. Yeah. So that's one. Uh, melatonin high dose when you go to bed when you first get there and you need and you're going to bed with everyone else mm -hmm. high dose melatonin so what's I mean because uh, normally you would suggest three to five milligrams that's high dose oh that's considered in high. my opinion yeah they'll say as much as 10 but the the truth is half a milligram of melatonin is what you would take normally so I buy sustained release like three or five I think I have five a sustained release that I bought so we'll just do for five I'll hook you guys up yeah okay. you, take, you take one of those um, and then I like, and I don't know if there's a lot of data on this. I did see one study that suggested it may help, but uh, CBD, cannabinoids. So mm. Ned, we'll bring Ned. Okay. And we'll take that along with the melatonin. Just their normal or should we take it with the sleep? You can't, we can't take it with the sleep. In fact, that's a good idea. I didn't even think to, to add the extra <laughs> herbs that are in there that help with sleep. Yeah. But definitely. That one knocks me out, dude. Definitely the cannabinoids. Yeah. So it's like, okay, we're here. What time is it? We're supposed to be in bed right now, but maybe we're not tired. Yeah. Take a bunch Definitely of- Definitely bringing my princess mask. Knit, no, is and then obviously, the first thing in the morning, we're going to want to get some sort of sunlight. Or I, I thought I read somewhere about doing like the get infrareds. Sun, yes. And, yet, and it, upon waking, you want to get as much sunlight as possible. Okay. Good there. luck there. <laughs> you know what it's going to be raining the whole time. Is it? Did you check? Is that the weather? I did, yeah. It, we're oh. raining the whole time? Pretty much, uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Good, good thing I have wool well, Monkey suit's going to get all wet, man. I don't want to What? Be, yeah. Oh, you mean your suit? Yeah. yeah. Did you, you guys, guys got a tweed one like me. Did, did you get, did you guys get, you trying to look like a professor? Is that what you're yeah, doing? Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you guys- Are uh, you wearing your tweed one? Yeah, I'll uh, wear one of them. Yeah. Did, did you guys get petticoats? 
I have one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the English thing, right? Petticoat. I actually have this cool. I have a like, peacoat. Cool yeah. one. The same I thing. Am I saying the wrong thing, Doug? Did I say the wrong name? A uh, petticoat is. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I have to look that petticoat, one up. Petticoat. I think it's for girls. <laughs> Did I just fuck up <laughs> real bad? Yeah. Wow. Sal look up petticoat. It's all right. Did I, I think it's a peacoat. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Do you guys bring your skirts? Is it Andrew? What is it? Uh, it's, a, it's for girls. Kill. Oh, it's so great. Oh, sorry, bro. If you brought your petticoat, I can't wait to see it. Right? It's a peacoat. Yeah. I have a peacoat. I have a peacoat. Yes. I did not bring that. Yes. <laughs> hey, how funny would that be if I... If Can I, we do an image with Sal with that? Oh, oh my hey, God. You, hey, you imagine uh, if, I, team, if we had an assistant that just did what you told him? Right, right. I want a petticoat for London. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. are you sure about sure, that? Yes. Sure? Yes. Okay. Yes. Give me a black one. I need one. Yeah. Immediately. Harry like, Styles uh, does it. No, Pico. Sorry. Yeah, there you go. Pico. I got one of those. I do have one, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I got two. I got one of those, too. I got two from State and Liberty. Yeah, I got Oh, sweet. You know why? Have you guys I ever, love state livery. Have you guys ever tried to wear a peacoat, like a normal one? You ever tried to put one on that's your size? Does not fit your arms. Oh, yeah. Does not fit your arms at all. Yeah. Because. You're not made for athletic. You people. guys' arms are not 12 inches. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I every time I buy one, I can't fit. But the state and liberty one. I yeah, I got I got a cool coat from Iceland. It was like a wool one that um, is like, it's, it's just big enough and, and it's not like, but it, the thing about wool, it's like, it's not th super thick, but, but it, it works. stays super warm. Yeah. In, in, in wet environments too. Yeah. Damn. I didn't know it's going to be raining like that the whole time. It's going to mess your hair yeah, up. Yeah. Uh... It's a different climate, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's too messed up. <laughs> I was afraid for his hair. Are you guys, <laughs> you guys have eye masks and stuff for the plane? And we got to get headphones? like Adam, one of those like uh newspaper guy, like hats, you know? Oh, oh like the mini beanies? Yeah. The little like, like the mini ones. Uh, you know, like you know what? This? With the Maybe? visor. No, the visor. Right? The little, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the little, the, they look like uh, like little mobster hats. I or used whatever. to have one. You know what? Those pinky blinders hats. Pinky yeah. blinders. Thank you. Those oh, look good in dude. Europe, but you're a douchebag if you wear one here. You ever find it? Find well, a guy who wears went one in now? London, bro. You, there you, you go. You blend in. If you wear one here now, you're almost always a douchebag. I don't think that's true. Okay. Yeah. Who's the last person to wear one? Well, I don't think that I don't think you are allowed to make any sort of fashion <laughs> comments at all. Oh actually. my god, you so can't disqualify me every time. This, yes, you're just disqualified. You just you're not. This is not a credible source for that. Like uh, you can, if, it's not about what you wear; it's how you wear it. If you if you wear something confidently and put together, you can do whatever the really? fuck you want. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I believe that. Well, so. well, douchebags used to wear them. So. <laughs> or just, what's that other hat that that dorks wear? The what is it called? It's not a top hat. It's oh, a, the brim. The oh, bowler. I think. I, think I don't know. You know the guys are like Malady. super hipster ones. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to be cool about. Yeah, yeah. yeah terrible that anyway i wanted to bring up a subject that i think is interesting i got a couple dms on this a, a while ago and i had it in my notes i think it's an interesting topic around uh, strength training the question was seated exercises versus standing exercises same exercise yeah. so like seated shoulder press versus standing shoulder press uh would be like a good example to talk about seated lateral raise versus you know standing seated curls versus standing curls What's the difference? All that stuff. So I did a lot of thinking about this, um, but I'd love you guys' opinion on this because bodybuilders and advanced lifters will say that they like doing seated lifts because it helps them concentrate and isolate the muscle they're focusing on. And I can I can attest to this. I think if yeah. I do a seated shoulder press or curl, I think I can concentrate more on the target muscle. Isn't it more just about like a volume thing so you're not like in fatigue and the rest of your body? Like, if, I, I don't know, in terms of like- That's a great point. I, I mean, I would have this to is how I look at it, okay? St standing and doing any movements functionally for overall health is it's, always going to be better. It's yeah. always going to be superior. So, uh, but being truthful, a lot of times I'm lazy and I want to sit down and, and do a military press and mm -hmm. I don't want to stand up and do it. So- I will more often than not sit down and do a shoulder press, but then I will always interrupt that with some standing push press or overhead press because I know that is overall better for yeah. me. Well, so here's that's so how I look. I, at it. So that I've heard people say that makes sense. Justin, what he said makes a lot of sense, right? It's more fatiguing because you're well. Yeah, that's why standing. I'm being lazy. That's why right. I'm sitting down is me being right. lazy. So maybe <laughs> maybe advanced lifters do them seated because they're trying to not fatigue other areas as much as possible, so they can continue doing sets. Here's another angle I'd love you guys' opinion on, um, especially for the beginner to intermediate person. The more muscle mass you activate, the more muscle fibers you tend to activate in the target muscle. Mm. So if I'm trying to hit my shoulders, if I tense up the rest of my body while pressing, I'm more likely to hit more muscle fibers. You're going to recruit more I'm going to recruit more. Yeah. However, when you're advanced and you really know how to recruit muscle fibers, 
Fine. Then I think that you don't need to do that, and you can actually do it. Because you've already established that connection. Right. Like, you take yeah. a bodybuilder who can isolate a muscle, relax the rest of their body, I bet you they can activate as much or more muscle fibers without having well, to Well, you see that when they pose and flex. Like, yes. And I've, I've noticed that. It's like they have, like, definitely worked on the mind-muscle connection, like, a lot more so yes. than other athletes. So I, yeah. I, I can believe that. Yeah, because what's interesting is uh, the exercises might look identical. Seated curls, standing curls. Do they feel the same? They don't. No. They don't feel the same. No. Not even in the target muscle, they feel the same. Yeah. So there's got to be something else. Of course, the answer is, you know, mix them up, do all of them. But I think if you're a beginner to intermediate, you should do as many standing exercises as possible. Totally. Yeah. As you become more advanced. There's, there's a huge benefit yeah. to learning how to generate as much force as possible. And by doing that, like creating the most stable anchored body and you have to use all the rest of your muscles to to produce that stability yep and so once you figure out how to do that i, I totally agree you, you'd be able to like ramp up the muscle recruitment and then uh direct yep. it uh, probably more effectively. well i mean listen the, the the core is the most important muscle in your body besides your heart and you absolutely are forced to utilize your core in any standing movement you cannot stand and do any you standing. You engage it seated, but not like standing. No. I mean, close. you could technically slouch. Yeah, you could. You could totally slouch in, in that or do what a lot of guys do in the that middle where they slide their ass out further and then they're like, yeah. it's literally- Now it's like a high incline bench. Yeah, it's more like a high. So yeah. you absolutely can relax the core when you're impressing. And so it's, you know, you're you're- it's never going to be more beneficial. Yeah. I mean, for bodybuilding. Yeah. I mean, if I, cause all I care about when I get on that military press is I just want a bit big round shoulders and that's the way my brain is thinking. And so of course my default was to go that way. But if I'm advising a client <coughs> or training someone else, or even myself, I'm always making sure that I'm incorporating standing because it's, it's superior. You want to know how I used seated uh, overhead presses most often when I train clients, cause I didn't train a lot of advanced bodybuilding stuff. So average people, I would use it on clients who had trouble fully extending overhead. I'd have them sit down in a tall bench uh, and they would use the bench as a way to, because otherwise when they're standing, you'd like it's, press into the bench. Yes. Their body. And they, and then it would really give them the ability to really press the arm back and get overhead. And then when we'd get better at that, then we would progress hmm. to standing. That was the most valuable I mean, that, way that I used I, it. I, what I learned later, I, did, I actually never trained clients. So the Z press didn't come into my, uh, my routine until after. Yeah, see, I great time. example. Yeah. I would yeah. now like that's my, would be my go-to step one. Yes. If yeah. I was training a client before seated or standing, I would Z press yeah. because of what it what what it's going to force them to do as far as yeah. their their shoulder mobility, their core activation, like slowing the process down. Yeah. Like anytime as a trainer, like you know, I, I did a video on YouTube. It was, it's one of our more viral exercise videos where I demo doing bicep curls in a split stance. Mm -hmm. And my argument or case for why you should do bicep curls that way was from a, a teaching perspective because it was a trainer hack on how to keep my clients from cheating. Because if you are in a split stance and you're having to balance and stabilize, you, if you rock your shoulders and arms or have any movement like that, it throws you off, off balance. And so you have to first stabilize, keep yourself stationary, and then it would just force a client into good form and technique. So, And I remember as a trainer, when you learn little things like that, like, and of course, you always have the other community that will try and make this argument, right? If I try to argue with some you know, hypertrophy science dork, He's going to say, that is not the best way yeah. to build biceps. But it's like, listen, training most people who can't, who don't have good form and technique, that's my first desired outcome is can I get them to move the weight properly and, and stabilize their core and target that area? And that was a hack. And so I think the Z press for trainers that are listening is yeah. an incredible hack to teach your clients to get full range of motion, totally. good totally. shoulder press. Yeah, what I'm thinking about, the clients specifically I'm thinking about is when I would train elderly people who couldn't even extend their arm above their head at all with nothing. Mm. And so what I would do is I'd have them sit on a bench with the back on it. I'd have them to keep, I'd have them keep their hips and back up against the bench so they couldn't slide forward. Then they'd go up as far as they could. And then what I would do is I would, uh, I'd have them hold onto a stick and I'd pull the stick up while they were trying to press. And then sometimes they couldn't do that. So then I tell them to pull down on the stick just slightly, but just enough to where I could also pull them up at the same time. And that would get them in the range of motion. And then I'd say, now hold this position. And then they'd be able to connect yeah. Yeah. to that top position. It was, I learned it from a physical therapist. <laughs> mm. It was one of the most effective ways I could get these people to finally extend their arm above their head, literally within 
weeks, I would get people to be able to do an overhead, you know, just overhead extension, not a press, but yeah. um, overhead um, extension. Yeah. Anyway, um, something else that's interesting. So, um, you know, we just, I just moved and we were looking into um, getting a reverse osmosis filter for the house. Because for the entire system or just for like your one sink? Just a drink. Right? Okay, got Just it, a drink, got right? it. And so, because the house already has a water filter. But it's not reverse osmosis. Is it a water softener? N no, no. Just a regular water filter. So okay. it's like carbon filter. Well, you know, the ones that they have in fridges typically. Got it, got it. And um, that gets rid of like particulate matter and small things or whatever. But reverse osmosis will get rid of like chemicals Everything. and, right? So I'm like, no, we probably, want, yeah. we, we probably want reverse osmosis. So I was looking up and doing more reading. And I, to be honest, I, I'm not super versed on the differences. I just know that that is the best way to get rid of It strips everything. Cool. It, it here's the problem you have no minerals left in your water yep. mm -hmm. it gets rid of everything mm -hmm. so you know that so, so you have if you drink reverse osmosis water and you're an athlete and you already have electrolyte imbalances you need more yeah so you probably if you sweat you work out hard whatever you got reverse osmosis water like put a little salt in it or or like element t even more than you normally would because you're drinking water with nothing. It's been stripped. With yeah. nothing in it at all. So, I'm, so I, I didn't get it. Instead, what I did is I got um, uh, spring water, mineral spring water delivery, which is more expensive. Yeah. But, you know, I'm not going to, I don't give my kid, my, my two, year, my three-year-old and my, you know, right. um, electrolyte powder, but I also don't want them drinking water devoid of minerals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I give them the spring water as a result. That's so I didn't know, you know, as I was reading, I was like, oh shit, that's not good. You don't necessarily yeah, want, you that want the filters. I mean, like tap. I mean, remember when they were talking about what they found in tap water yeah. with like birth control and all kinds of stuff. That yeah, pharmaceutical drugs in there. Yeah, yeah. And th I mean, it's a real thing. Like, look into it. But uh, yeah, to not have that replaced with minerals, then you're going to be deficient. Yep. And so, yeah, that's that's a good point. You know they put I, fluoride in water too. They do. You know where I learned that staying on brand with the marijuana talk that we have going on too. <laughs> so when you everything relates to we need marijuana. a sponsor yeah. we so, need a marijuana sponsor Jesus so Christ. when you would you you do we had a reverse osmosis for oh, you watering the plant stuff to it so and the reason for that is that you wanted a zero base nothing in it because so then you I could perfect so I could perfect yeah. all and I used to measure we used to measure parts per million of every nutrient that would go in there so you were like measuring the exact amount of magnesium, the exact amount of uh, phosphate, whatever it is that you were adding to the plant. And then you tracked all that stuff to be like, oh, when I did this for this strain, it did that. And like, so yeah, I, I learned that because you would, you'd have nothing and you couldn't just feed, you can't, like, if you give that plant just that water, then it would be super deficient because you, it's not getting any sort of nutrients. Yeah. So it's, and so as I was reading it, I'm like, I don't want, my little ones to drink water without minerals. Yeah. I mean, we put stuff on our food and stuff, but we don't eat a lot of processed food either. They're not going to get the sodium. They're not going to get it. So um, I went with this, with the spring water, but so LMNT, um, by the way, a lot of copycats. I, I talked about this. In previous oh, episode. I know all the brands that are popping. I, I see more. Everybody's copying them now. Yeah. When they came out, people laughed. Oh my God, a thousand milligrams of sodium. You couldn't do that. Yeah. Now everybody's like, Trying to do the same thing. I mean, they, well, they the, the maverick in the space. You they know? they crushing. Hey, speaking of cool companies and stuff, have you guys seen the new TV? Uh, the I think the brand is called Displaced. Doug can pull it up. Are you guys familiar? Have you seen this? No, Displaced. The no. first uh, completely wireless television. What? Well, you don't yeah. even plug it into the wall. Nothing. How, what is it run off? How, of? Yeah, how's that power? Uh, obviously a battery, right? So it obviously uh, charges. Cool. And, yes. <laughs> it and it has like a suction, it has like <laughs> suction cups it, you know. to where you can like suction cup it to like any wall, and that's how you mount wow. it. And then we get to charge look it though. Trip. You still got to charge it. Look at what. Look at look, it's super, how, like, super cool. Did they say how long like the power lasts? It's got a like, nuclear reactor. Have, yeah, uh, swappable batteries. Oh, so swappable. I imagine you have a battery that's sitting on being charged all the time while the other one's in the TV, and then you probably swap it out. I imagine you get enough battery to last at least a day. I would imagine there's a lot, been a lot of innovation with batteries over like trying yeah. to get the electric. You know, there's limitations and everything. There's limitations though. The the physics limit it. So we need we need a, a, a we need a revolution in energy storage for sure. Yeah. Um, wow, that's cool. That I, cool. I want to know how long the battery lasts though. Look, look it up, Devin. See where see, I'm sure it'll say it on there. I actually didn't read where how you long. You got to be at least able to watch an entire. Oh, I would think it would last all day. I would think you get a full full twelve hours at least of which who watches twelve hours straight of television, and then as long as you have a separate battery, one battery is always sitting on a charger. When that twelve hours is every day, you, you know just, what's cool about that because huh. and that's me assuming it's often only when you hours. put your TV up, you have to, that's the thing you have to look for. 
Yeah. yeah. Is where you plug it in. I know. Well, yeah, you have to base where you put it. Wow. And wow. because it's just suction, you can literally move it. So let's yeah. say you suction it to a room, and then you're like, oh, I want Gives TV outside, outside yeah. today. I'm going to go suction it to my oh, outside wall. Oh, I didn't think of that. Outside. Oh, yeah. TVs, yeah. And I, I imagine it's light. How do we all make the outside oh. even less healthy? Let's put TV <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. So, so this is the battery situation. Yeah. So there's four batteries. If they're all fully charged, you expect six hours of viewing time a day for 30 days, or roughly 7.5 days of nonstop. For 30 days? Nonstop viewing. Six hours. Yeah. yeah, but for 30 days yeah, straight. Right, 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 right. 7.5 right. hours of non- wow. uh, Days, I'm sorry. 7.5 days of nonstop Oh my viewing. God, that's yeah. crazy. Isn't that great? That's a lot. Isn't that now, cool? I wonder if it's like, because you know, it's got less power, right? Or maybe uh, would it show like as good of a screen? And well, you probably run it down if you had all of the settings on super bright and uh, you know, all that. But, wow. but I, I mean, I can't, is it it's, expensive? it's got it. Uh, yeah. It's like, well, I mean, compared now, but it wasn't as bad as remember when plasma TVs first hit and they were like, grand. Yeah. yeah, I think it's like four grand for like one of these oh. TVs, which is not like, well, that's like, that's, that's this is even that's better. Cause I got one of those, the Samsung frame. And so it's like nice and like thin. flush to the wall. So yeah. I don't have like cords everywhere, but this is even, it still has like a little transparent cord. And so now you got no cords. I know. Oh, isn't yeah. that cool? I think that's so, I think that was so cool. I just, awesome. I just saw that the other day. Oh, by the way, I want to close the loop on Elon Musk. I, I brought it oh, up right, and then right. I didn't say oh, anything. Oh, yeah, People are going to be pissed off. Duh. Here's what he did. He took over the Twitter, Twitter headquarters. His rent was way above market rate because, uh, you know, a lot of people stopped working in offices, that stuff. He stopped paying rent, just stopped paying it, knowing that he would either get taken to court or whatever. And the loan he got to purchase Twitter was at a lower interest rate that would have cost him to pay all that stuff back if he lost in court. So literally, yeah, he figured out the capital, figured out he could save money by not paying, and that's exactly what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. So and then what it did is it brought the, the landlords to the table. Yeah, because then they're like, okay, what do we? Because they knew they knew like if we were to go and fight this, it would take us months, possibly years in court. And, and if we kick you out, who's going to move in? And then even if we got it, and then you yeah, or kicked you out, then we're going to get a less. So it was like it just it forced the conversation to the table. It's just a That's, brilliant, it's crazy, a brilliant yeah. strategy. Yeah. To All right, do that. that is smart. Last thing is kind of cool. Did you guys see the nail salon robbery where the dude came in, tried to rob everybody, nobody gave a shit, nobody stopped doing anything. What? Yeah, it, is, Doug, this is the one that got hit with a broomstick. Really I don't hard. know, Doug. Look oh. up nail salon robbery. Uh, you know, did he, no one cares or did, something like that. Did he come come in with like with a, a shopping taser cart or, or something? something? No, like a gun. I think I don't think anybody cared. I think they were just getting their nails done. <laughs> and they went, and they just like give them the money. Like they not care like well, that. Let's they, watch or, the video. Yeah, let me let's see watch it. the video because I read about it. And why, I hey, it was, why Doug's pulling that up? We got, I gotta. I want to thank our audience. Oh yeah, look at look at man tries to rob Atlanta nail salon. But gets ignored. What? Yeah, yeah watch this. Right, I gotta see this. Everybody, get out! Get out of your money! It's got the money! Get out of your money! Hey, give me your money! <laughs> Everybody's just like, what? <laughs> Nobody cares! Give me your money! Where's the money? Everybody, give me everything! Where's the money? This has gotta be a spoof. Where's no, the money? No, this is real, bro. Where's the money? Nobody's giving him anything. <laughs> he just gives up. Hey, he walked out. <laughs> oh my god! No way! No <laughs> way! Him. Nobody gave him anything, hey, and then he just walked. Hey, out. No way! Hey, what? How often? Wow! Do these happen that they just like? Oh, here we go again. Really? Okay. Nah, I'm not giving you shit. I mean, yeah. I'm not doing nothing. I All mean, right. he must not even have a real gun in there, right? That's got to be probably what it was. Yeah, because it didn't look like it. Yeah, so it's he probably was like like, trying to hide it. Like, yeah, pretending. they're probably waiting to say, like, let's see if he pulls the real gun. Out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. If he doesn't pull the real gun out, I'm not gonna make a move. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that's funny. Is that hilarious? That is hilarious. Hey, hey that guy <clears throat> for forever made fun of by his. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Hey, bro, how'd that robbery go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hell. nobody That's cares. Super embarrassing. Nobody yeah, respects yeah, him. Yeah, he know he got lost yeah. all the respect got from through. his buddies. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I did want to um, thank our audience. I think that uh, something really cool happened this week uh, with two of our friends, not one, but two of our friends making the New York Times bestseller. Oh yeah. And, uh, Boom. Both John, uh, yes. John, John Deloney. Deloney and Dr. Gabriel Lyon, both their books hit the New York Times bestseller. Um, I know that our audience came out and supported both of them. They're both really, really close friends of ours. And, ama and great books. Yeah, yep. great books, great friends. And I uh, just appreciate um, the people that listen to our show that went out to support the two of them because we got a lot of love and uh, for them. And the fact that you guys all came together and did that, that's awesome. So this is a, a thank you to all of you.
Buy Optimizer's Black Friday Super Sale is on now. Okay, so Buy Optimizer's has some great products. My favorite are their digestive enzymes, helping me break down proteins, fats, and carbohydrates to get to my muscles, helps with digestive issues. But they have many, many other products. Everything is on sale, big sale, huge discounts. Go check them out. Go to Buy Optimizer's, B I O. P T I M I Z E R S dot com forward slash mind pump, and then use the code mind pump 10 for an additional discount at checkout. All right, here comes the show. Our first caller is Melanie from Idaho. Hi, Melanie. How can we help you? Hi, guys. First, I wanted to say thank you so much for all of your content that you put out. Um, you guys have changed my life, like for the better. Uh, you really taught me what I want and like. A husband and who I want to be as a mom when I finally become one. So I just really want to say thank you all so much for all of your hard work and everything that you do. Wow. Thank, oh, thank you, you so much. Awesome. So um, I guess I'll just read my question as I sent it in. Um, I started MAPS Anabolic. Uh, I'm currently in phase three. I actually just technically finished it last week and I'm starting performance today. I did an in-body scan last week, and I found that I had lost 0.7% body fat and actually 0.7% muscle mass as well, so an equal amount, and I wasn't quite sure what I had been doing wrong because my calories are still, technically, they're a little bit lower than they used to be. I used to eat around 4,000 to 4,500 calories, and now I'm at 30 to 30, I would say. I thought I was still kind of in a caloric surplus, but I guess not as much as I thought that I had. So really I'm curious, is it normal to lose a muscle mass as well? Or did I just completely do something totally wrong and just set myself back? You did nothing wrong. In fact, I love this question. Here's why. This is a wonderful example of what a terrible idea it is to rest your laurels on uh, body fat tests and scans because you're you're saying 0.7 and 0.8 the error of margin the margin of error I'm sorry is like 3%. So it means literally nothing. Yeah. Uh now what you want to look for when you do those tests are trends. Is it going down every week or is it going up every week or is it up and down every week in which case it might yeah, be The next test will matter more than that test. Right. And then the one after that will matter even more. Um <laughs> so what we want to do is look at other things to kind of figure out what's going on. Um, the best measurement would be strength. Are, did you, are you stronger now than when you, you, you were when you first started? I'm technically stronger in a sense that my endurance is a lot better, which is why I really like map, uh, maps anabolic because I feel like I can go so much longer than I used to. Another problem that I kind of run into is that my job is super taxing. Um, I I work at 3 in the morning to 3.15 in the morning, so I have to wake up at 1.15 every morning. Whoa. So I just actually, when I used to work out four days a week and going down to three days a week, it really helped a lot to be able to actually last for an hour, hour and a half workout. So I'm stronger in a sense that I can definitely keep going for an hour, hour and a half, and it feels pretty good. Okay. Uh, but my, they're pretty much the same that they used to be. Okay. If what? you feel, if you feel like you're better and more fit than you, you did get stronger. Although I, it sounds like you're doing the three day a week version of maps anabolic. Um, yes. Yeah. I would, I would even try the two day a week based on, cause the job that you have, um, uh, night shift has puts tremendous stress on the body. <laughs> I mean, tremendous, the data on it, it's, is pretty interesting. Um, like all cause mortality and health risks go up regardless of lifestyle just from working at night. And that really highlights the stress that it places on the body. Besides work and working out, are you doing anything else? Um, like as far as like my lifestyle, I guess. Yeah. Cardio <laughs> sports. Are you doing anything else? Are you just lifting weights and then, and work? Yeah. Just lifting weights and work. I actually, I work two jobs and I go to school. So I used to do a lot more cardio, but since my step, I mainly just focus on my steps now. Yeah. Uh, I get at least 10,000 a day without even trying with my job. So I really just kind of leveled out and I'm just focusing on strength right now. Okay. That's good. Yeah. The other thing I'd like to point out, cause you kind of broke up when you said this, so I want to make this clear. You're eating 3,500 calories a day. Are you tracking? Is this accurate? Yes. Yeah. I've been tracking every day for over a year now. Wow. And my yeah. 
they say around 155, 160 at least. So I, I try to keep up on that. Yeah, because 3,500 yeah. calories That's for impressive. That's a young lady like you um, is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, a cut would be quite easy from this point, although I would recommend you stay where you're at and continue to try to build strength just to make it even easier to sustain later on. But the fact that you're at 3,500 calories and you obviously, you know, you're, you're doing okay. That's, that's amazing. I, I, I that's a goal. I've, I'm always trying to get women in the 3000 range, 3,500 is quite a bit. Yeah. It's incredibly impressive to be up there and there. And you said you used to eat 4,500, which blows my mind. That's incredible. If, and there is this possibility. So if you do the body fat test, let's say another month from now, and then a month from now after that, and you see this similar trend going, maybe you're cutting your calories too much right now. But other than that, I would hang out where you're at. You're at a good place right now. And I think that what you'll see is I think that the next test, you'll probably see more positive numbers or in the right direction and you should be okay. But if for some reason you head down this trend where you're losing muscle at the same rate or faster as than body fat, then you potentially could be in too much of a cut, which sounds crazy to think at 3,500 calories, but that's possible depending yeah. on how much you're moving. Yeah. I, and you just finished MAPS Anabolic, right? I did. Yes. I think a good follow-up considering your schedule would be MAPS 15 and do the advanced version. So basically you're going to the gym most days, but you're only doing about two lifts. So you're in and out in like 20 to 30 minutes, essentially. <coughs> um, and it's a daily workout, but I think that that your body would probably like that. Uh, over any other program that we have. And I would predict that you're going to see some strength gains from doing something mm -hmm. like that. I agree. Okay. And should I be concerned at all? Uh, when I did the body scan, it said that I'm now at 16% body fat. Is that, I know I don't want to go any lower than that. And I'm not purposefully trying to get into the teens, but is yeah. that at all concern, do you think? Yeah, that's not accurate. Uh, yeah, I don't think mm, that's accurate. No. That's really, that's really, really. 16 is really, really That's low. like competitor on stage. Let's like get into lean. that level. I think, I think you, I think you need to not do that. Whatever scan you, it sounds like, okay, so you didn't an electronic impedance scan, right? So where you grab the handles and it tells you where you're at. Okay. Um, did you go somewhere to get that done? Like, did yeah. you go to like a, a supplement store that had it or something? Where'd you, where'd you go? No, I went to my gym. They offer it with the membership that I have. So I do it every three months. Okay. And then are you consistent with like the time of day and like what? Because ideally you want to do those like first thing when you kind of get up and no water, no food, no anything in you and stay consistent with that. Were you able to do that? I was not. I was able to kind of stay in the time frame. I've done it in the morning around 10, 1030. Yeah. But Last time I did it, I did eat before I hmm. before I went. Yeah, you Are should there try any trainers there that could do like uh, Caliper. calipers for you just to get a comparison. Oh, I actually haven't asked. That's actually a really good idea to do that. Yeah, I would do calipers. Um, and if you do calipers, have the same trainer test you each time yeah. uh, because there could be a little bit of difference in how they do it. In uh, um, Dexa scan is another option, but I, again, don't. Uh, yeah, you know, don't get hung up. Don't on get that. hung up on like a single measurement. Yeah, you're looking for, for trends, sure. especially if you feel good. Yeah. You're happy where you're at. You're eating the amount of calories you're eating. Yeah. I mean, you're in a really yeah. good place. That I, are fitting good. All that. I, stuff. I, yeah, I wouldn't want you to change much, but that's off. Uh, yeah, I definitely think that you you want to. It could make a huge dip. By the way, like eating before uh -huh. and, and and water or liquid before. You can change it by four percent. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, I've I've manipulated. I've, I've actually intentionally tried to see how much I can mess with it within the same day. And I've actually moved the thing three to four percent within two hours of just making sure I consume and then drink. Well, yeah, so the, they can be manipulated quite a bit. So if you weren't exactly the same, if you weren't hydrated exactly the same and fed the exact same way on one test as the other, it could really throw these things off. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. That's yeah. really good to know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing you could do is you could do circumference measurements on yourself. And measure uh, waistline, you know, like, yeah, waist, upper thigh, upper arm, hips, and then just look and see the trends and 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 how they're moving. That's another option. And then finally, really, it's just how you feel. Mm -hmm. Like, do I feel good? Am I strong? How's my metabolism? How's my skin? How's my hair? Uh, how's my sleep? How's my health? Um, and and you know, those are they're more subjective, but I like paying attention to those because we can get so hung up on weight or body fat percentage 
that we start to make decisions that aren't the best for us yeah. because, you know, like I, Adam I, said, we can manipulate yeah. them. You're, you're 5'10", 148. You're great. Yeah. You look great. We can see you. You look great. You're yeah, eating thirty. Tall. You're eating thirty five hundred plus calories. You're five ten, one forty. You're in a really good place. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I think literally, I'd actually ask, probably not want you to focus too much on these numbers. Uh -uh. It's like, let's talk about optimizing your sleep. Let's talk about how school's going. Let's talk about how work yeah. is going. Yeah. Like, how's your strength? Like, that's the stuff I'd be talking. About. I think you're in a great exactly. place. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. Would you also recommend going back to five by five training? Cause that's kind of the training that I tend to gravitate towards. And I tend to gain at least five pounds of water weight when I do that. And I feel good on it. Uh, right now I feel pretty flat. I would say, I know yeah. I've heard Adam, a lot. I just feel deflated at the yeah. moment. So I don't know if it's cause I've been doing hypertrophy and if going that's, back to the, no, that's the, that's the cut in calories. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the cut. In the, so that's calories. Right. So when you cut a thousand calories out of your diet, you're, you're, you're depleting the muscles of glycogen. If the muscles have a bunch of glycogen and they're going to be filled out and more bubbly looking, and if you're going to feel like you don't look that flat look. And so it's very normal to feel like that because you're cutting it's calories. It's also, here. look, it's also um, easy to misunderstand the volume in MAPS anabolic phase three. A phase three is supersets, high reps. Even though it's only three workouts a week, it's a lot of volume. Um, and it might be too much. It might be too much for considering your lifestyle and what you're doing. So Master I'm going to send you maps 15 and you get the five by five in there too. Yeah. So do the advanced version. Yeah. Okay. Do the advanced version of it. You'll be in the gym most days, uh, and you'll spend about 25 to 30 minutes in there. And based off what you're saying, I'll, I'll predict that you're going to see some good strength gains with that. Yeah, I agree. Well, thank you guys so much. I really, really appreciate it. This has helped immensely so much. Thank you. You got right, it. Awesome. Thanks you for calling in. One. Thank you guys. Have a great day. You too. Either. Sweetheart. Yeah. Either when she opened, it was a compliment or the opposite when she's like, you showed me what, <laughs> what kind of husband I want. So it's either the opposite yeah, of us or like us. Yes. Exactly. She left us hanging there. Yeah. Know. Like what do you yeah. mean by that? Yeah, yeah. So, um, she's bro 30, if she's accurate, at 3,500 calories. That's crazy. Her, yeah. I mean, that's great. That's awesome. I mean, and she's, bro, she's 5'10". She's a tall girl. Yeah. yeah. And 148. I mean, she's- Yeah, she's at the right body 25 weight. years old, yeah. eating 3,500 to 4,500 calories. She's great, healthy. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I mean, I wouldn't really want her to get hung up on any of this no. stuff whatsoever. But yeah, when she said, when she was talking about the <laughs> 0.7, 0.8, like the, the God, with in-body, the, the know, margin man. of error is crazy. It varies so much. Well, she, when she said 16%, <clears throat> like, no. That's yeah. definitely well, not. and then she also said she ate. I mean, that one of them she didn't, the other yeah. one she didn't. I mean, that's enough yeah, right there. Big, that's yeah. enough right there yeah. to yeah. manipulate yeah. the thing several percent, much yeah. less a point something percent. So, yeah, she's doing good. Our next caller is Lindsay from Tennessee. Hi, Lindsay. How can we help you? Hello. How are y'all? Good. Good. How are you? What's good. going on? Good. So can I just go ahead and ask my question? Of course. Yes, let's hear it. Okay, cool. So backstory, I've been actively working out, I would say for about a year and a half now, got a trainer, started from reverse, going up to maintenance, did a cut. And I feel like I was in a cut for too long to where I was kind of hitting a plateau. So I would say it was like six months long. And so I was from 1,745 calories to, I think I went, or I went from two, 2,465 to 1745. And so I felt like I started hitting a plateau. I started getting a little bit weaker. Didn't know like if I'm doing it on my own from now on out, like from here on out, how long should that cut last for? You look pretty lean, Lindsay. Do you know what your body fat percentage is at right now? No. And I tried calculating it before. I think I need to go like get it done at the gym with someone. They offer it all the time. Yeah. So I would guess you're in the teens right now, which is probably why you're plateauing. Are you noticing any changes in your like hormone symptoms or menstrual cycle or anything like that? I did. Yes. It was, de it was definitely a lot lighter and now I'm back in reverse. I just started like six weeks ago and I feel so much stronger, yeah. so much better. Yeah. I'm hitting PRs now. So but like six months just seemed way too long for me. Yeah. That, that is a long cut it and is. you look to me to be in the already in, in the mid to high <laughs> teens with body fat percentage. And that's just, that's okay to touch every once in a while, so long as you reverse out of it and, and, and work on feeding yourself. But for most women sitting around, you know, 15, 16% body fat is not healthy. It's going to uh, affect your hormones negatively. It's going to affect your fertility. And then that's going to make it, you're going to hit plateaus uh, by doing that whenever, and start to burn yourself. Whenever out. I have someone like as lean as you are and we're, and we're doing any sort of cuts, I won't ever run you more than three weeks. Yeah. So I'd run a three week cut and then I'd run a week back in a surplus 
Oh, three wow. week, yeah, yeah, three week cut, one week surplus, three uh-huh. week cut, and even at that, even doing that, you'll see yourself lean out that way. And then I, once you get to a place where you're more than lean enough, I'd say, okay, let's go to a bulk or let's maintain for a while. I don't want you even. Which start. I haven't done yet. I haven't done a bulk yet, which I want to because oh, like yeah. my body thrives on carbs. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know why it thrives on carbs? Because you probably don't eat. You probably have depleted yourself for for a little while. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. 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 Do you have visible abs in like midsection? I'd like the upper area. I definitely want to like lose more lower body yeah. fat, like stomach fat. And that's just something. Now nah, you're too, you're too, you're too lean, Lindsay. This is yeah. why you got to reverse. Yeah, yeah. I would go into bulk. Yeah. Definitely go into bulk and just get strong and, uh, and do that for a while before trying to, to cut down. But like, I, I how long would you say like a bulk? Well, do, so do the opposite of what I said. So in a bulk for someone like you, I'm going to run a three week bulk with a one week to maintenance to, to a, a, a deficit. Three week bulk, and then one week of a maintenance or deficit, and then very just, small deficit yeah, during that week. Just yeah, you're not trying to really cut at all. It's just you're you're just maintaining or on the lower end, right? Yeah. And then you go back to a surplus, and you just keep doing that. And so I like to push like a number or a place of like satisfied eating, like a client like you. I'm going to be like, let's see how high we can get our calories until you look back at me and you go, Adam, this is just too much food. It's so hard for me to eat 3,200 calories a day. I can't, I mean, it's like, all I think about is like, where's my next meal? And it's too much. And I'm like, oh, great. Let's go the other direction now. So I was- now I'm like, oh, I'm still so hungry, hungry throughout the day or like, I try not to eat past nine because usually I'm in bed by then because I wake up really early, but sometimes I'm just like, I'm so hungry. And like, I'll go have an English muffin with peanut butter or something just because I know my body needs more food. That's yeah. a sign that yeah, yeah, yeah. you need to eat more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would go yeah. into bulk. You're going to feel so good yeah. mm-hmm. in a bulk. And I would just pay attention to the weights you're lifting in the gym, how strong yeah. you're getting, like really make that a goal. And that's going to shape and build your mm-hmm. body and your health. Like it's going to be amazing. It'll if, feel great. If we do this right, we'll get to a place where you're eating 3000 plus calories and then you'll yeah. be able to come back down to, to like, like 2,500 to 24, 2,500 and be leaner than you've ever been eating the most you've ever ate. Like yeah. that, that's a good goal. I mean, and that's kind of what we would do. And I do it through the process I was telling you where we would be doing in three weeks, one, three weeks, one like that in both directions, whether you're bulking mm-hmm. or cutting three on one off is like a cool way to do it. I know y'all talk about a lot because I listen to your podcast in the morning and stuff um, when I'm walking, but with a cut, is cardio absolutely necessary? Because I hate cardio. No, I'm no, no. Cardio is detrimental. I wouldn't yeah. even want you to do cardio. If no. we can, if okay. we ideally we do There's all no of this, all of this manipulate. You know, it's here's what's cool. If we get to this place where I build your metabolism up to 3,000 plus calories, then I bring you down to 24, 25. You get as lean as you, you, you've ever been eating 25. Now you have all this metabolic flexibility. You can go back up to 28 to 3,000 during the holidays, enjoy a little bit of food. Maybe you put on a tiny bit of body fat, or maybe you're getting ready to go to Vegas or Florida. You're going to do some beach things. So, and you, all you do is do a little bit of cardio for two weeks and you'll shred out because you I, never do it. I tell, I'll tell you this much, Lindsay. Uh, think of it this way. This will serve you well, right? To get lean is diet and strength training. Cardio is for endurance and stamina. So if you want more endurance and stamina, cardio is great. But Which I for, could probably use, but still. But for, <laughs> for fat, well, look, what kind of endurance do you want, right? You can yeah. get more endurance by shortening your rest periods with your strength training, by doing higher reps. Now, if you want the kind of endurance that allows you to run uh, for long distances or something like that, then you got to train that way. But cardio for fat loss is terrible. It's ter- In fact, the, the, a new study just came out showing that <laughs> Cardio actually reduced the fat loss in people when compared to strength training or compared to cardio plus strength training. So it's it's actually detrimental to, to it, it sends a, a signal that actually tells the body to burn less calories. So I would avoid cardio except for health or endurance and stamina. And if it's just about getting lean and feeling good, strength train and then diet. That's it. That's my goal. Excellent. Yep. yep. All right. Perfect. What program are you on right now? What are you we- following any of our programs, Lindsay? What was that? Are you following any of our programs? I'm not. I've done research on it, but since I have this trainer, she kind of programs for the programs them for me. So okay. once I'm done with that, I will be on my own. So I like having that structure and consistency. So I'll probably look into that. Cool. Well, once get, I'm done with her in December. Get your um, body fat tested by with calipers by your trainer. Okay. And um, a good place to maintain that's lean and healthy is like between 18 to 22%. For most women. So if you're in the teens, like 16, 15, you know, then yeah, you want to get out of there. I mean, you could stay, you could be there for a little bit, but you definitely want to get out of there because it starts to affect hormones in a negative way. That would make sense. Yep. Awesome. All right, Lindsay. All right. Thank you. Well, thanks guys. You got it. Take it easy. All right. All right.
You too. Okay. Bye. I wish more uh, more uh, people communicated that message of body fat because it happens to men too. If you get too lean as a man, it starts to really negatively affect hormones. Oh, yeah. It's just mm -hmm. we can get a lot. We can go further and get away with more. Women, their bodies are much more sensitive to it uh, because obviously they're they're evolved to you know procreate. To, yeah, to have a baby. Yeah. Yep. And you know, for most women, you get down to fifteen, sixteen, and you maintain that. And I say most because of course there's people on the on the outskirts. They just have neg that just their yeah. body will start to plateau real hard and try and go in the opposite. And they it's start fighting misleading because all magazines yep. and all these you know people you follow yep. they have like super lean bodies. So yeah, it's not it's not a healthy place to be. I mean, I'm I'm pumped back to back females in just great places. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean just both good, good heads on their shoulders. Yeah, yeah. good place uh, where they're at with their their body composition. Good place where they're at calorie wise. Like I mean, even where she's at right now, like saying that she's low. I mean, it's so nice to hear somebody who's like cutting. To seventeen hundred calories, and she's seeing these yep. these negative effects just by by, and then by refeeding, she feels a difference up to twenty four. Yeah, like, be able to even communicate. Yeah, this is a great great place for for both of them to be at right now. Our next caller is Adam from Ontario. Adam, what's happening? How can we help you? <laughs> Not a lot. Uh, how are you guys doing? Good, good. good. Yeah, it's awesome being able to see you guys like this. This is uh this is actually a real treat here. Right so, on. thank you. What you got uh, for hope us? You guys are doing good. So, um. Yeah, I'm sure you guys got my question there. Um, I uh, I work, you know, long days construction. I have a hard time uh, getting to the gym after work. I seem to be really burnt out. I've tried going to the gym after, but as soon as I get there, I start working out, doing my squats and deads, and I end up finding myself wanting to give up just after like the second set. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm getting all my carbs in. Um, I'm aiming for 140 to sorry, 160 to 180 grams of protein a day. And uh, I just can't seem to figure out what's going on. I know my sleep's been a little uh, wonky as well. I'm not really getting any good sleep. I'm aiming for about seven and a half to eight hours, but uh, sure. And I'm not sure exactly what's going on here. So I'm hoping you guys could uh, shed some light. The answer was in your question or what you just said. It's your sleep. What, so you work construction and you work all, all day, right? So you're active all day long. What kind of construction do you do? Uh, so I'm in residential uh, construction, so I help uh, build houses. Yeah. So you're really active all day long. Your sleep is off. This is this is 100 percent why you're feeling the way you're feeling. Yeah. A workout, so a workout that I would do with you would be like a Maps 15 style yeah, yeah. workout where you're doing two lifts and you're out. You and we go to the gym yeah. for 20 minutes and you leave. And have you have you toyed around with the idea of maybe doing it before you work or at lunch or something like that? Like, have you? Have is you that possible? Uh, not during work or anything like that. Uh, I was thinking about, uh, um, in the mornings, but anytime I wake up in the morning, I'm just so tired, just so dog tired. I'm trying to just trying to just get myself up and just get going. Cause I got to take my dog out, got to make myself breakfast. And yeah. I'm usually at work by seven. So I'm up around five. So, I mean, um, I've never, usually the workouts that I've been doing are usually full body anyways. And it's usually two times a week. What uh, so what, trying to get those down. What's your caffeine use look like right now? Uh I've actually slowed it down over the past year to about maybe three cups uh up until around twelve because I used to go to town on it. I used to I love my caffeine. So um so it's about three cups and you know, up until twelve o'clock and then I don't take any more. Now you okay. the focus should be on sleep, figuring out what what's wrong with your sleep and now what could be wrong with That's your why sleep I asked about caffeine yeah is uh is that you're 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 doing too much so one of the signs of overwork or overtraining is bad sleep so you'll see like um athletes or people who lift they don't even have heart, like active jobs let's say they work in an office but they do a lot of workouts and then all of a sudden they're like man i, I just keep waking up throughout the night i don't get restful sleep what the hell's going on and it's cuz they're overtrained they're they're doing too much for their body yeah, that yeah. might be one of the reasons while your sleep is a little off, I would take a, a week off of all strength training. Um, you could try supplementing with a good adaptogen just to help the body deal with the physical stress. Ashwagandha is a good option. And then when you get back to it, I would do MAPS 15. That would be the workout program I would do. Yeah, I like I like the idea of MAPS 15. And I like the idea of actually not even thinking about the workout, but just trying to optimize the sleep first, right? Yeah. So MAPS 15 is the protocol. We'll send that over to you. But really evaluate, and it could be a lot of different things when it comes to sleep, right? Like I, I know I have a lot of things that I'm guilty of that fuck up my sleep. One of those being 
if I do drink caffeine too late or I'm, I, I have too much of it yeah. uh, or uh, I'm, I'm on my phone or on my computer past, you know, the sun going down or I'm just binge watching, you know, Netflix late at night and I'm not, or I eat really late that night. Like, so all those things are culprits of fucking my sleep up. So like, and so I would, if I'm you, I'm looking at all that. Mm -hmm. It's like, before I even think about what my goal is in the gym, I'm like, let's first nail this down and let, let's prove to myself I can string four or five days of like really optimizing my sleep and, and not, you know, checking all those boxes of not doing the things I just listed off and making sure it's good. And then you'll probably feel good and feel like you want to go to the gym. That's what I'm seeking for is I'm looking for like to feel good. Yeah. I want you to want to go to the gym before I tell you what you should do at the gym. It's like, we need to figure that piece out first. And so focus on the, on that. And then when you do, you don't need much because you're already a very physical, active guy. Mass 15 will do you wonders. Yeah, and, and uh, magnesium might be something good to take mm -hmm. before you go to bed mm -hmm. as well. I played around with magnesium for over a year, and I've kept going. I've kept it going consistently, like every single night. Okay. Um, I've even tried the three, two, one method for about a month. Like, you know, I the one that I've actually found out on your guys' podcast. I can't remember who talked about it though. Um, and uh, I thought that was really interesting. So I played around with that. I didn't see any results and then my girlfriend actually she went and seen a naturopath and she's been getting good sleep ever since she went and seen one of those mm -hmm. so i'm thinking about going to see one of a uh, naturopath as, as well so yeah yeah, um, yeah your body's a little overwhelmed yeah. that's worth that's worth the investment slowly. too yeah 100 percent. Okay. but i would go okay, week cool. off maps 15 um and then and then take it from there and see if you could get some good sleep towards the end of that week off i really appreciate all the help guys i really do that's you awesome it. you got it man we'll send that over to you I really appreciate that. Take All right, care. All right. Thank you. Who was it that talked about the three, two, one? Cabral. Yes, it was. Yeah. Was it Cabral? Yeah. I, I believe You're right. So. It was Cabral. That's I um, so. Yeah, I know this. This might be one of those two, or it'd be good just to track and and really peer in on the sleep, like with one of those oral rings or yeah. something that can do some like non invasive way to do it, just to to get because really it's the deep sleep, so quality sleep that uh, you know I'm sure he's missing. Yeah, I don't know. Have you guys ever experienced that where you're 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 training so hard, like too hard? And then it messes up your sleep. Oh, of, yeah. Course. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course. You're just, you're, you're overtired. Mm -hmm. you know? I'm, I'm like ridiculously sensitive to getting bad sleep versus good sleep. Like I can, so my aura ring, I can score as low as 60 to as high as 90, 92. Depending like, on a few things. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Depending on all those things I just said, I, I'll range that far of like that much of a score yeah. discrepancy. And it has a lot to do with like making sure I check all those. Boxes. But I mean, you know, people underestimate like the, the physical toll that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, construction puts on the body. It's you know that, a lot. You know, that's a, we didn't even suggest that to him, but that's a, a he's a perfect person who I think is a, a good investment too. Like an O-rings, you know, it's a one-time investment. You got it. And then, you know, and again, it, it's Give not the, some objective. Measure. Yeah, exactly. It's not the end all be all, but if you're really trying to get to the bottom of like how that, yeah. that's what I love about the, the ring is that's how I use it is I'm mainly for my steps, mainly to see the things that I'm adjusting. Am I getting a better yeah. night's rest and, and, and move me in the right direction? Well, it especially feels like he's been trying to figure out all these different interventions and you know, what's like working, what's not working. Yeah. And so like, if you're, if you're really kind of like trying to nail this down, it makes sense to track it a bit more intensively. Our next caller is Greg from... Greg, what's happening? How you doing, Greg? How can we help you? What's up, Greg? <laughs> My pup! Hey, hey. Come on, I'm geeking out right now. <laughs> what's up, dude? Uh, fanboy, fanboy. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, first of all, thank you guys for everything. Um, just... You guys have affected, have affected my life and so many others in more ways than just fitness and nutrition from fatherhood to, you know, how to load my dishwasher. Uh, <laughs> we're getting it all. Wow. Um, so appreciate you guys for that. <laughs> can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. What yeah, you got yeah, for yeah. us, Thank Greg? You. Yeah. What's up? Uh, all right. So, so I've been training for 25 years. I was a trainer for a few years, nutrition coach. Um, I have like all you guys programs, um, I've been listening to you guys, like I said, since the, uh, since the uh, dishwasher thing. Um, I really want to ask about um, training with kids. You guys have been touching on it here and there in the last couple of weeks, but I kind of want to get like your, your overall advice on training my kids. I have a 13 and a nine, both boys. Okay. Um, so the 13 is, he's a club, club hockey, club baseball. Um, and it's, it's all, you know, you guys could do an episode on how youth sports needs to get changed. I mean, it's a mess. It's a mess. It's too much. It's too much for the kids. I know it, but once we get in it, we're just kind of stuck. 
mm-hmm. and you just kind of go into the next thing and you go into the next thing. So my whole thing is I'm trying to balance, and I'd love your advice on this, I, as a father and a trainer, right? So I want to push him because like all the great athletes, somebody pushed him, but as his dad, I don't want him to burn out and just, and resent me for it. Mm-hmm. Um, I sent in a video. He's, he's 13. I mean, he reps 200 pounds deadlifting. Uh, right now I have him doing That's awesome. during the season, during hockey season, he lifts once, once a week, um, just five by five, uh, sled pushes, deadlifts, overhead press and rows. Hell yeah. Um, yeah. During off season, which is baseball season, so there's no real off season. Um, I have him just li- uh, doing two days a week, pretty much the same. We just ran unilateral because I've, I've been listening to you guys for so long. I, I was like, listen, you're you're an athlete, you got to switch to unilateral here. And he came back, and now he's it's almost scary strong. Like for for me, being someone who's worked out since I was 14 years old, like you know, we hear all the things like, is this going to stun good. his growth? Is this going to like ruin his athleticism, or is it just going to burn out? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, so I'd love to hear you guys t- talk on that. Um, for a nine year old, I just have, he's, he's one of those kids who just kind of every ball he picks up, he knows what to do with. Mm-hmm. It's kind of frustrating for all the other kids. <laughs> um, he's, uh, so I don't, I don't have him like pushing anything. He's just kind of, I'm just, I have him in my weight room learning everything just to kind of be familiar with a gym setting. Yeah. Yeah. First of Perfect. all, you're, you're doing really good. Yeah. Bro. He's, I, he's, I think you're, you're killing it. With yeah. His deadlifts look really yeah. good. We just yeah. saw the video. Yeah. Yeah. You're That's doing good technique. Especially you're doing, unilateral move and all that. I love that. You know, here's the thing with burnout, which, which is interesting with kids versus adults. So you ever see a, you ever see a kid fall down, right? And they get, they, they bounce right back up and you know, if an adult fell like that, they'd hurt themselves real bad. When it comes to volume on the body, because kids are smaller and lighter and there's less energy demands, overall their volume is a lot less, even if they're doing a lot of work. So this is why kids can play and run all day and, and top athlete. Look, I, my two-year-old can out activity a top athlete. I guarantee it. I watch him run all day long, never stop. Uh, I, I don't know any athlete that can continue to do Why? Because he's two years old. I mean, he's not, his muscles are small. The volume is low. The demand on the body is actually quite low because they're a lot smaller and younger, but they can still burn out. And so the balance for kids is looks like this. You don't want them to get hurt. Mm-hmm. You want to pay attention right. to things like getting ill. Like if he starts to get sick often, that's a good sign. If sleep is off, sleep. that's a sign that yep. he needs a he one. needs a break. But here's the biggest one with kids that you want to look for balance is more of a lifestyle balance. Is he also doing stuff that, you know, like playing, hanging out with his friends, I would gauge it by interest. If he's like, dad, let's go. I want to go do more. That's like, then you're probably okay. That's exactly yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah. As long as he, he kind of steers it. Yeah. As long as he's excited. Like, I mean, a dream for me is that my son one day comes to me and he wants to be pushed because right. then I'm going to give it to him and I'm going to give it to him until he he can't handle it. Like that's, if he's asking for it and he's, he's excited to, to do this with you, I'm, yeah. I'm doubling and tripling down on it and I'm going to end because I know he can handle it at that young age. I'm all in on it, dude. So, but I also want to be careful of like, I'm, so passionate about basketball and wanting him to be this great that I don't want that to bleed into like I'm pushing him and there and you got to be that's a tricky thing right because kids want to see dad happy that's right right? yeah and so there's this fine this fine dance of is he really doing it because he wants to do it or is he doing it because he sees that it makes dad happy and so you know and he's a young adult so check in with him I literally say like you know hey son do you do you enjoy getting pushed like this? Do you enjoy, you know, do, we're doing the work and do it? And like, just make sure that you're getting that vibe from, and you know, you're some better than anybody. So if he's even con- more than that, like, you know, when kids are really into something, mm-hmm. the, what you'll find is in their off time, they're reading about it. Yeah. They're talking about it. Yeah. You know, they're, they're throwing the ball you know, around it's a, still. It's yeah. in their conversation. They're walking around with the soccer ball or what football or whatever. That's what I would watch. Yeah. That's what I would look for. Like, man, he seems obsessed. Like I'm not even talking about this. And I hear him talking to his friends or I'm, I'm, he's watching YouTube videos yeah. on baseball or whatever. That's the kind of interest that you want to gauge. Burnout starts to look like they're avoiding it. They're avoiding it. They don't want to do it. They don't want to talk about it. They don't, you got to push them. You go, oh, come on. We got to go to practice. I don't want to go to practice. I don't want to go to practice. That's a sign. of. It's not always burnout, but that's one of the signs of burnout <coughs> with kids. Yeah, and I think I think what you're doing is great. I, honestly, I think <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're over analyzing a lot. Yeah. Like as long as their interest is guiding this entire process, and, and they want to get better uh, and stronger, and they know that's going to benefit them in their sport, and um, this is all kind of work in that direction. I mean, really, my guiding principle, uh, you know, when somebody's that young, so if it's like you know, thirteen. 
really mastering the mechanics and, and slowing everything down and the pacing. And, and really, it's not about volume. You, you don't need to be in there do, doing these elaborate workouts. Uh, it's really, it's so much uh, more important to master these techniques and to, you know, that's really where you coming in to kind of observe and help yeah. is going to make a big difference one way or the other. It's not about them getting strong and big and all that 13 years old. Uh, I would wait a bit on that really pursuit. So which I, which I think advice. you you can we can tell by this video. I'll tell you right now that it's it's he, not he great form. Yeah, you, it's not common to see a thirteen year old deadlift with that good a technique. Yeah, and it didn't look like yeah. you were pushing him yeah. to that's, failure. That's, or anything that's, like that's that. really that's really <laughs> good technique for that's really good technique for an adult for him to be able yeah. to do that. And of course, I can. That, that was six months ago. He just turned thirteen. He's, yeah, bro. That's, and that's the part that scares me as a dad. It's just yeah. um. So when I was a trainer, I, my, my mentor was one, uh, a Mike Boyle guy. So I always hear him oh, in the perfect. back of my mind saying, how strong is strong enough? Yeah, he's one you know, of the best. so do it like, but as like, uh, as a, as a coach or whatever, like, you know, I coach a football team. I would always want them to be like, yeah, go for more, like be stronger. Like, but as his dad, I don't want him to, you know what I mean? Like get in that danger zone where it's like, how strong is strong enough? The neuromuscular right. adaptation is, is so important at this age. So the, the, what Justin said is key. It's like, we're perfecting the skill of these exercises. Yeah. That's it. Like he'll, he'll be able to pile on that once, you know, his development is a little bit further. Yep. Like that's it, You're setting the groundwork for that to happen at a better pace. That's yeah. It. So, and, and there's nothing wrong with letting him challenge himself and, and see a PR every once in a while, just interrupt it with like, uh, like, like uh, band work, right? Put bands on it and do way light weight and do speed with it. Now is and and technique or or pause in between the re go light real light. You let him go up six inches, pause six more inches, pause. Yeah. So I would I would play with things like that. So we're not always trying to see how much more weight yeah. we can put on the bar because right. you're just, the return on that right now isn't that high. So it's like mm -hmm. why even risk that? It's okay to chase it every once in a while because I think there's a there is some benefits to letting him see himself get stronger and put more weight on the bar. And I think you're doing that that weight that was on the bar was fine. That technique looked good for a kid pulling that weight. So he, you're, I think you're doing great. This is us nitpicking you. Yeah. I would probably play with some other things. Like, like I said, like real slow, negative halfway up, pause, pause again and, and, and lower the weight, and then do speed reps where you put bands on it, put half the weight on there and have him rip it up and then go back down, reset, rip it up then go back down. Like, Play with things like that, so you're not always focused on more weight on the bar. But all in all, bro, you're. I think yeah. you're doing great. I think one day a week, three, four lifts. Is, yeah, is, is which is what he's doing. Right. Yeah, that's right? what I just said. Yeah, so you're, perfectly fine. You're doing. You're doing yep. great. Yep. I, I you know, that's I love, good. I, lo right, I loved it. I, mean, uh, I, 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 I was kind of thinking I was, that we were in the right direction. I just, I guess, I kind of just needed like the experts to like approval. You know what I mean? So, um, just uh, as far as nutrition goes, right? So, like, I come from, um. Uh, like I have a history of body dysmorphia. Like I've been on a diet since I was 10 years old. It took me until about two or three years ago to finally just be happy with myself. And, um, I, this is something that's even more scary to me because I don't, he grew up eating processed foods with us and it's all junk and it's hard to get him to eat protein. And my little guy, we had, by the time he was born, we, we had switched over to a processed foods, free diet and he, he'll eat a bowl of broccoli just, you know, right with us. That's so, awesome. Another a big, a big fear I have with the oldest is pushing him towards a healthier nutrition. And, and my biggest fear being that he'll reject that and yeah. go into yeah. the way that the, yeah, I was, which is the most, something I do not want for him. The, yeah, yeah. So there's two yeah. things to consider. Uh, and one of them is probably more important than the other. But when you're dealing with kids, my opinion has changed a lot uh, as, I've, as I've gotten older. Uh, one is, okay, optimizing his nutrition for performance now. Okay. The other one is setting him up for the future when he's no longer under your tutelage and guidance to have a good relationship with food in an environment where food is plentiful everywhere and cheap. So in my opinion, the second one's more important than the first one. The first one is important, but uh, when you start to place an emphasis on grams of protein and carbs and that kind of stuff at this age, what, what you may end up with is a relationship with food later when they're free to do whatever they want. They're like, I'm going to go. And they end up developing a relationship with food that's complex and challenging. That's going to be with them for the rest of their life. So there's a way to do this that I think uh, helps with both. And really it's this. You prepare his food. You give him four options on his plate or three options, one of which you know for sure he likes. And then the other two, the ones that you 
you know, that you would like him to eat. And then you let him eat what he wants. And you just, and he, and you don't say anything about it. And you eat what you want. And you present it to him on a consistent basis this is this way. And what you end up finding over time is they end up picking those other meals and those other foods. And it's his idea. It becomes his idea. Um, and, and that helps develop that relationship later on. Because honestly, at this age, except for the extremes, diet is not going to be the difference between him uh, going to you know, D1 school or not. Later on it is, but it's that relationship that's, I think, most important. I have a, a little bit of different thoughts on that. Not that different because I think the, the desired outcome is the same, um, which is basically kind of leading him to want it. Like, I'm actually not worrying about this. Like, he's, I think you already recognize the difference of, of having a kid that you raised where he was brought into no processed foods and then he naturally can gravitate that that's an easy process. It's always more difficult when you're trying to take it away from someone like that. It's not a big deal right now because he's so active. There is going to become a time because he's so into performance and getting good at his strength. He's getting good in his sport where he's going to ask you, or he's going to look for or be frustrated because he's not seeing the performance gain or change. And it will that's present, an conversation. it'll present the opportunity to say, well, you know, son, we really haven't tried to dial in, optimize your nutrition. If you're ready for that, like I'll help you with that because there's lots of opportunity for us to get even better there. It'll come. And so I'm not even going to worry about it until that opportunity presents itself. And then I'm going to jump on it. I'm going to jump on it and be like, well, you know, let's start to dial the nutrition a little bit. If you're ready for it, dad will help you put together like some things that's going to make your performance even better. And you're going to feel even better mm -hmm. until then. You know, he's he's so active, it's probably not going to be that big of a deal right now. And once you get him to ask you, it's game on. But if you try and force it or manipulate him or trick him into eating your way, you know, kid, you know, kid, they're just going to push back. He's just going to resist it just, just because you're doing it. So you got to kind of find a way to get him to ask you the, you know, what else can I do, dad? Or do you think there's something I'm missing? And, and once you get that opportunity, then there's your opportunity to go like, well, you know, we really haven't dialed the nutrition in and you've gotten this far. So let's, let's tweak some things there if you're open to it. And then when, even then I'm making mild adjustments over time, like starting to get him to do a couple things a little bit better or, or cut something out. That's probably hindering something. And then, and then he's bought in and then, then it's good. Yeah. Love that. So don't go the, uh, Dropping sarcastic comments in, Rob. Yes, right, yes, it. yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. yeah. 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 Damn mistake, it, dude. Yes, I, yeah. uh, I, bro, I think you're doing really good, yeah. dude. In fact, I would love to hear. Uh, are you, at, Greg? Are you in our forum or no? No, I'm not. Are you on Facebook? Can I get you the access to the forum? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay, yeah. cool. I'm going to put you in there. I would. I love hearing about kids that are like like driven like this and, and hearing their progress. And as a dad, so yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, I'd love updates every like six months or so at least. So let us know how he's doing. That's awesome, guys. I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, listen, job, Ju man. hey, Justin, listen. Yeah. I was talking to one of my coaches. I coach fourth grade football. I was talking to him the day before your the uh, episode got released when you talked about making kids tougher, and we had the same conversation. <laughs> it's our job, bro. Yes, yeah, there's job. a couple of us out there. <laughs> Stay strong, listen, brother. The parents won't do it. It's our job. It yeah. is. It is yeah. right. Uh, Amen. All, All right. right. Appreciate All you guys. All right, Greg. Doing great work, man. Awesome. Take it. Take it easy. Thank you. Thank you, dude. Yeah, the, the whole cool. yeah, the, you know the whole like volume thing and overtraining thing. Like I, I don't know if you, I mean you guys remember this when oh, we were bro, you could, you're, thirteen. You're unstoppable. I used to go. Out, we we would be outside, uh, riding and running and climbing all day. Yep, and you're fine, bro. I it could, just doesn't I know. beat your I could, body. I could up play video games, have a motor video games till three in the morning. Get up, go to school, go to work, and then go play basketball yeah, afterwards yeah, 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 and yeah. do it again the next day. Yeah, like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's and just, you feel fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it just it's just when you're young, it just, just doesn't damage the body as much because it's just not as much volume. I mean, how much you lifting every time you do you, you run at the age of 12 versus when you're, you know, 32. It's mm -hmm. just it's just a lot less damage, but it really it's the interest. That's where you start to see kids get burnt out or they're like they don't want to do anything. You're like, "Okay, yeah. yeah. We're going well, that, that same advice, the interest with the sport is very similar to the interest with the diet. I feel the same way yeah. when you have it. Mm -hmm. So, and he has such a clear example of what happens when you raise a kid on whole foods from start. It's just what they know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so it's really easy. It's really challenging 
when you didn't, and then now you're trying to take it away, and they're in those pre-teen teenage. But it is teenage- possible because look at us, right? Yeah, like yeah. I, I look at that all the time. I'm like, I was all processed food, and then I just didn't want that anymore. That's right. So. At what at one point, you, you it will interest you, or you become curious about it, and he's got the knowledge and understanding mm-hmm. of it. Then that's yeah. when you that's when you jump on it as dad and go like, okay, here's here's the path. I miss this the spray cheese the most. I would say I do. <laughs> look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com. And check out all of our free guides. We have free fitness guides that can help you with your fitness goals. Also, come find us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 